Oh, there I am. <laughs> Jeez. i make sure. I'm going to make sure I hit that little button there. I'm here. Come on, guys. I'm here. All right. We're doing this thing. Let's see. All right. All right. Get out of there. All right. We're doing this thing. Let's see. All right. If you are a Patreon, if you are a Patreon, not a Patreon, a Patreon, I'm now sending the link. I'm posting the link. So there you go. So like I said, guys, when it came to all this, when it came to um, ch chatting first, hey, what's up, Christina? What's up? I'm doing a crazy thing here, talking to uh, strangers all around the world. It's fun. But uh, hi. How's it going? Cheers. Cheers. Uh, yeah, I know. What a nice surprise, right? What's going on, guys? Hey, how are you? There's uh, what's going on, movie? What's going on, Jason? What's going on? I'm here, Max. Don't worry. I got you. Got you. What's up? What's going on, Will? How you doing? Cheers to you. I love you too, Christina. Yep, live chat. Like I said, uh, at first, like I said, the first people that are invited on are are the patrons, <laughs> which I don't have many, but I, you know, I figured since um, since they're part of the uh, the Patreon, the Film Junkie Patreon, I would invite them first. So let's see what happens because I know one in particular person. I have thirteen patrons, so I'm not even sure, you know, if they're gonna end up uh, if they're gonna end up coming on. I know this was kind of like, I didn't know exactly when I was going to do this, like what time of day. What's going on, Milf? Lemon? Ryan? What's going on? Good Saturday? Well, so far, you know, I just, I watched a, uh, a small acoustic set from, um, from, uh, from the Foo Fighters at the Troubadour that they post, that they uh, did tonight. Watch that. Got the uh, ALCS happening right now. Looks like the, the Rays might pull this one off. Game seven, awesome stuff, and I'm sipping a beer and talking to you guys. So, yeah, it's a good Saturday. Uh, I, I better, I better, oh, <laughs> uh, you're funny there, Borg. I get what you're saying. Wants to know if you listen to Dynamic Duel. No, I, I don't listen to Dynamic Duel. Are they like a, a podcast? I'm, 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 I'm assuming, I'm assuming they're a podcast or something. Um, but yeah, so I sent out the invites to the patrons, but I don't know if that's what, what's going to happen with that. Like I said, I mean, yeah, I knew this was going to be like an experiment kind of thing almost, you know? Uh, and then soon I'll actually invite people on Twitter and then I might get crazy and I'll just throw it into the live chat right here. I might just throw the link in the live chat. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I'm just, this is something I wanted to do. You know, I've been teasing it for a while on the uh, the live shows and whatnot, saying that I wanted to talk to you guys. You know, it's funny too because I've actually um, I've actually done this before, a long time ago, when I was not really doing the film junkie thing, but I was doing the Mandroid thing when I was uh, doing the Android stuff. And when Hangouts, like Google Hangouts, was like a new thing, and you could go live, you could live stream, and then invite people on or just send out an open link. I used to do that when I did that, and that was. It was very interesting. It was actually pretty cool, like to just talk to random people. What's going on, Futin? Futain? You haven't got the link? I posted it. Check out the uh, check out the main page. I posted the link on the main page. I think, yeah, I posted it. Make sure you check out the posted links. Anybody who's a patron, and I think that's only going to be you, Darren. <laughs> What's going on? What's going on, Harib? Okay, this one's a little, you know, I knew it was going to get a little weird, you know, somebody on Twitch. Someone on Twitch, of course, is going to say stuff like that. It's fine. It's, it's good. I know, I, uh, you know a lot of people are just horny for me. So, yeah. All right. So, we might have our first little uh, guest on here. But like I said, I don't know. We're just kind of, I'm just kind of just, I don't know where this is going to go or anything like that. I'm... I'm not going to go crazy, and I don't know if I want to go crazy and post it just on my Twitter. <laughs> I was thinking about that. I was like, should I just go post it on my Twitter? But I was like, nah, I don't know about that. I don't know if I want to just post it all publicly on my Twitter. So I was kind of like, okay, uh, I'll get to a point where I'll I'll be just doing um, Twitter followers, you know, or something like that, and I'll just like send it direct message. But 
We have our first one. We got Mr. Jacob. What's going on, sir? Hey. What's up? Okay, are you the Jacob that always gives me yes. crap in the live yeah. stream? You are. Yes, I had a feeling. What's going on, man? How you doing? What up, man? How you doing? I'm I'm all right. Okay. Uh, you- yeah, I'm the one who's always trolling. I <laughs> I like to believe that I'm a good troll, decent. I guess you're a decent troll. No, yeah. no, I get it. No, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, what are you drinking tonight? Uh, the Corona hard seltzer. How is that? It's uh, it's fine. It's like uh, it's sparkling water. So. Yeah, I know. I, I've had the Smirnoff version. I've had the, um, what is that? The White Tail? What is it called? White Claw. White Claw. Is that what it's yeah. called? I've had that. And um, I noticed when, when it comes to the seltzers, you probably won't have a hangover because you're essentially drinking water with mm, alcohol, yeah. you know? And that's one of the things I noticed when I, the first time I drank it is like we went through like an entire 12 pack, 18 pack or whatever. <laughs> First off, it wasn't too strong. And then secondly, yeah, I woke up perfectly fine. And I was like, that's cool. Well, I'm a lightweight, so I, I can <laughs> probably get buzzed off a bit. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know. I have like just two of them. So that's I'll good. See, we'll see what happens. <laughs> that that might be enough to let me buzzed. So yeah, I'm on my I'm on my third one right now. So I'm right there with you. So what's up, Jacob? Now that you're on, got any questions, man? What's up? What are you drinking? <laughs> I'm drinking Pacifico okay. right now. Yeah. No vodka tonight, guys. I'm like, all right, I'm going to relax on vodka a little bit tonight. So mm. picked up a little six pack of Pacifico. Yeah, yeah. Nothing wrong with that. But so, yeah, you're usually the one <laughs> yeah, stirring up some stuff in the uh, in the live mm. chat. But I mean, I think I even I think I commented about last night. I'm like, I respect that. I don't care. I mean, you're not you're not being like some of those guys. Like, what what was that one guy's name? Lex Truthor. Yes, that's you know, true. you're not like you're not doing that. I mean, yeah, you, you throw some uh, jabs out there, but it's mm-hmm. like it's all friendly and good. And I'm I'm all about a good troll, you know, and stuff like that. So it's never like I'm never like oh, I'm gonna kick you out or something like that. Have I crossed the line though? I no, like I, I don't think you have. I think uh, sometimes I've been like I. Maybe I've like said something in the past, but I don't think that's ever been anything like like too bad. Yeah. Okay. See, and look at this person right here is really just going crazy on mm. Twitch. Mm. I don't know what the hell. <laughs> I don't know yeah. what's going on. <laughs> there is a person from Twitch that is just having uh, some fun right now. Hey, I, I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, you know what? That's what this is all about. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you futane futin whatever the hell you are um yeah please let me in the podcast i don't know if i want to let you on the podcast that might mm. be uh that might get a little strange <laughs> but was that man. the twitch person or? yeah okay. futane yeah see well, they want to <laughs> <laughs> uh if i i don't know should i take that seriously I don't <laughs> yeah, probably not probably not but uh it's uh it's interesting i mean i don't know if it's a he or she i can't really tell by the uh (laughs) they really want on they got the uh what is that from monsters inc i don't know or monsters university i don't even know what's that (laughs) all right well we got another uh person who's a patron mr darren mr laugh now cry later what's going on sir hey we we live right now we're live oh hey youtube what's up hey (laughs) <laughs> your, your your otter is a little low, but it's fine. I think. Oh, it's, well, hold on, let me see. I'm on my phone. Okay. Yeah. What, what about what about now? Sounds a little better. Sounds okay. better. Yeah. Okay. What's going on, sir? Man, Darren, now, now Darren and I have talked actually, you know, in DMs and stuff like that. He uh, he's posts videos on Twitter. Do you have a YouTube? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you have a YouTube, not, right? I'm getting it started. Nothing really yeah. on it right now. Not a lot of stuff. But some stuff. Some stuff. Some stuff, yeah. No, some of the stuff's funny. Like I really dug the 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 movie theater one that you did, you know. Like Appreciate the people there, yeah, that was a good one. That was a funny yeah. one. So and uh, um, but um, yeah. When it comes to YouTube, what's your YouTube name? Uh, I think it's Mr. Laugh Now Crowley. <laughs> you know, you know? <laughs> I think it is. <laughs> I, think, I think that's what it is yeah it should be it's something yeah. like that i mean yeah usually that's what you appear as uh in the live chat so yeah, see, i do see him a lot yeah I think yeah that's yeah yeah you see always asking the questions and stuff like that what are you drinking tonight darren i am drinking ginger ale because i'm a little sick 
Oh, damn it. What happened? You got the COVID? Oh, shit. Watch out, you know, guys. You know, honestly, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'll know in like two days. Did you get a test? <laughs> yeah. I, um, yeah. yesterday I woke up and I was like body aching. I had a cough. Oh, man. And then like this morning when I woke up, I went to work and I stayed there like an hour. Then I went to the ER. And they did the flu Shit. test and did the COVID test and did the, the nasal, the, the fucking Q tip up your nose. Yep. Ah, <laughs> how did that feel? Uh, it's my third time getting tested. <laughs> okay. Damn. Yeah. So you're used the, to it. The first time that I got tested for it, my mom was like, You need to go get tested. And I'm like, why? And she's like, because you need to, you never know. So the first time I got tested for, it, I just went and did it just for the hell of it. Yeah. So, yeah. So you're, how long does the uh, the results usually have? Like usually, uh, uh, it depends really. Like two, two to three days. Yeah, then, like, it just depends because like my girlfriend got tested before and hers took like a week. Really? Yeah. Where do you live? I live in Tennessee. Okay. Because yeah. it's like it's it's so weird because when it comes to the testing, I mean they have like now they have tests that like go like that. Yeah, I know I've heard. Test. Yeah, rapid that's test. What they would have. Yeah. But it just seems like, you know, because uh, Wonder Meg, uh, Miss Meg, she uh, not been feeling good. And I, uh, you know, I was talking to her and she said she had to do the whole test because she was, you know, showing symptoms of that. And she had to she had to do the she had to administer the test herself, which is very really? odd. Yeah, because usually they do it right. Yeah. <laughs> I know this motion looks really weird, mm. but uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, where's that? Yeah, where's that Futane person? They're probably getting all crazy right now, but I think they might have left. But no, apparently, like she was telling me that, that she had to do it herself while the person was like in front of her. Now he's still here. She, That's she, weird. whatever. The, yeah. So, but uh, and then she has to wait for like three days for her results, and I was like, damn, man, that weird. sucks. And she lives in like you know somewhere in Michigan. That's you know. Yeah. Out in the middle of nowhere kind of thing. So I'm wondering if it's just like when it comes to that rapid testing, they probably have it in like the bigger, obviously the bigger areas. And yeah. Stuff, the but... bigger cities like New York and yeah, and LA. LA. Yeah. yeah. Cause I know like when I watch Joe Rogan and he always, you know, anytime that somebody shows up, he's, he tests them like right before they go, go live. It's kind of funny because he'll fly people now to Texas. You know, he lives in Texas. And then it's like, okay, so he's gonna spend all this money flying, and then all of a sudden it's like, I gotta test you before we go live. And I mean, apparently it, it's working for him, but it'd just be kind of funny if that person all of a sudden tested positively. Yeah. Like, oh shit, guess you we're know, not doing a podcast. You know, Ben Shapiro moved out of LA also. Yeah, he moved to Nashville. He moved to Nashville. I'm hoping I'll run into him one day. Oh, is he pretty close? To uh, you? Nashville's probably about an uh, hour away from me. About an hour away. Okay, yeah, and, and, and everybody sometimes. and everybody remember. And also, I'm excited to watch the Snyder Cut because Joss Whedon sucks. Always funny. Always funny. Yeah, I enjoy that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot of people don't. You know, a lot of people don't like Ben Shapiro because of his pol his politics and his. I love ben Shapiro. That's I good. Lie. There's nothing I wrong. I mean, like, yeah, when it comes to Ben Shapiro, I mean, I I came across him, you know, just because I. When it comes to me going down the YouTube rabbit hole of things, it's like you just kind of just yeah. want to hear people talk about certain things. And uh, I came across him and I'm like, damn, this guy's just like loaded with facts. And I, I like his little mantra slogan that says facts don't care about your feelings. Yeah. I like that. I like that. I, I don't agree. You know, when it comes to him, like and in the religious stuff, I kind of check out because I'm not religious. And yeah. I know he's had strong opinions on that because, you know, he's a Jewish man. And uh, he he's, has he said some things in the past, and I'm like, yeah, I can understand why people are offended by that. But I'm like, I don't have a I don't have a, a dog in the fight because I'm not religious, and I'm just like, you know. But a lot of other things when it comes to society, I'm like, yeah, I'll listen to him. He's loaded with facts, and he just got a you know, of course, he's got a little funny voice. And um, so when somebody sent me that clip, I was like, perfect, perfect, you know, because Joss Whedon does suck, guys, right? Yeah, but. He, uh, he, yeah. I, I can't, I don't even, man, I can't even, okay, look, the first time I saw Justice League. Oh, yeah, let's talk, let's talk about that. Yeah. I was probably just like everybody else, I came out of it, me and my friends, we was like, holy shit, that was good, mm -hmm. you know, and, but then we went and saw it again, and I started noticing some stuff, a lot of stuff that was missing, and then 
I was thinking it was going to be like BVS. They were going to release like an ultimate edition. Yeah. Like when it come to came to Blu-ray, then all the stuff about the Snyder cut or the, the stuff that Snyder shot was, it was coming out. And then I was thinking, damn. And then I was just like, a lot of that was pretty lame in that movie. Like the whole Russian family. <laughs> uh, well, you didn't like but, the bug spray? What are you talking no, about? Hilarious. I did not like the bug spray. Hilarious. Batman, Batman smile. Oh, God. <laughs> I and, clenched. I clenched when I saw that. I and clenched. then let's not forget the opening scene. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, that's where everybody just like, uh, I think all of us like collectively, even though like, you know, we try to be positive. I think we all collectively were like, oh, crap. You know, mm -hmm. Jacob, what about you? When you first saw it, what were your. Oh. Yeah, uh, when I first saw it, uh, I actually really enjoy it. Uh -huh. I saw it again like that week, too. And I went to school like the next week because I was off that week. I was praising it and like telling other people they should go watch it. But even then when I saw it, it was like the certain things that didn't sit right with me were like yeah. the thirsty joke. I didn't like that at all. <laughs> I didn't like it. Not even at all. I it was all know. out of place. It was out of yeah. place. It was like, you know, all of a sudden they show, you know, this news report. And then you just, and then it goes right into Lois and Martha, and you're just kind of going like, "This doesn't fit. <laughs> this does mm -hmm. not fit at all." And mm -hmm. I mean, you can always tell too, like when uh, Amy Adams did a reshoot because you know there's like a she was wearing a wig or something. I don't know. It's been a while since I've watched it, but you could it was noticeable in the hair for sure. And that's one of one of the things that I, when I watch movies is like I always notice hair. Yeah. I mean, we were actually talking about that last night on the vodka stream when it came to um, Fantastic Four, the you know the Josh Trank's you know version. Yeah, but when came, yeah, when it came to reshoots, I mean, what's her name? I mean, she looked like she was literally wearing Jessica Alba's wig from the yeah, original Kimara, yeah. Four. It was so like obnoxiously noticeable. It's like, how do you guys really? You don't? You're not seeing this? <laughs> And that's what, and then that just leads me to the whole, you know, Henry Cavill's, you know, fucked up face. It's like, who approved that? Who mm -hmm. really approved that? Like, like, why? Who sat there and was just like, okay, this is good. Let's put this out. Yeah. They just didn't yeah. care. That's they all didn't care. Now, they didn't I, now that I watch it, I would think, like, who the fuck? Who? <laughs> like, this whole movie is just, it, it looks you like. You know, I will be honest. I did like the Deathstroke scene because the thought yeah. of the Legion of Doom. I oh, did yeah. like that. It wasn't like, bad. I mean, like when it comes to like what Whedon did, I mean, I, I, it was even just recently where um, because, you know, with the uh, the Batman set images that, that came out and when he was like perched up there, yeah. somebody did like a side by side to when Batman was perched up in that Batman scene that Joss Whedon shot. Yeah. And uh, they said same energy. And of course, there are people in the comments or in the responses that were like, oh, it's Joss Whedon shot. I'm like, yeah, but it's a good shot. <laughs> I mean, but that's all the credit he gets. Yes, that's, that's what he gets. Yeah, he, he can get yeah. that. He can get yeah. that because when I saw that, I was like, ooh, look at that. He's perched up on a gargoyle and he looks like he's just like giant on that thing. And I that's really Batman. enjoyed it. Yeah, that was Batman. But then when the scene played on, it was like, Ah, <laughs> and how he called, he said Alfred's name right there in front of yeah. the, yeah, in front of the, yeah, it's like what, well, yeah, yeah, you, you have a bad guy right here that you're, um, you know, and then you're just gonna say Alfred right in front of him, smart, uh, yeah. very smart, you know. Speaking of speaking of Batman, how heartbroken were y'all when the Batman got moved to 2022? Oh, I was very heartbroken. Yeah. What about you, Jacob? Are you are you even for it? Do you even care um, about it? Not as much, no, not as much. <laughs> oh, man. oh man, well, at least we get one Batman next week, guys. I mean, or next week, next year. I wish it was next week. Next year, we at least get one Batman back, which is you know, yeah. Mr. Batfleck in the way he's supposed to be, not smiling at all, not smiling yeah. at least. So, I mean, yeah, when, when you knew it was coming, as soon as they put Dune. Like on that same release date, it was like, oh man. But not till you know. March. I thought yeah, it was just gonna be like Christmas or something. Yeah. Well, it's gonna be see, this is this is the problem I have when it comes to these release dates. And this is what I think what um Shazam suffered. Shazam's a fucking Christmas movie. Why yeah. the hell was it released in March or April or wherever the fuck it was? It should have been released in November. It it, yeah. it and yeah. and you know, because it was like and it was right in between Captain Marvel and yeah. Endgame, I think. Or yeah, it was Endgame, yeah. Yeah, it was like this or, thing. 
Or yeah. since Shazam been a January movie. Yeah, or that. But I mean, January is not exactly the best time to release. But movies. then more people would have went out and seen it. Then it true. Been something to watch. It is. It is kind of weird. I kind of wonder, like, when it comes to breaking it down and the whole analytic analytics of it all. I mean, I I, I should probably ask Mr. Colbert when next time he's on, because he probably knows like exactly how they determine, you know, how they determine a release date. Yeah. Like, when's the perfect time to do it? And then because. When it comes to January, that's where like they put like you know the the movies that aren't going to do well. And I would say the same thing with September, yeah. when the summer blockbuster season kind of ends. It's like yeah. okay, let's let's uh, we'll have some movie, of course, movies in September, but they're usually not that good. And then and then October starts uh, starts with like the 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 award winning movies, like the Oscar like the Oscar type movies. And then November, you know, you start creeping in. Well, and then of course October has like that Halloween ish movies if they're of course going to be in there. Mm -hmm. And then November starts uh, dipping back into the blockbusters. But um, yeah, I kind of wonder like how do they determine? And if they were to just throw one of these movies in January, what would happen? But I think that's what that's where uh, Shazam suffered. So now I'm wondering now that we know that there's some kind of Halloween party that's happening in the Batman. You know what's gonna happen? Like it's released in March now, and we're gonna have yeah, this like Halloween theme. You know, I, I thought it was the perfect month for that to come out. It really was. It was gonna be on but, my birthday. But I'm. Not, but you know what? I'm not gonna say anything because I don't want to hear it now. The Batman's pushed to October twenty. Oh, it'd be two years from now. Oh, I know, so right? I'm just gonna just just. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't put it out there in the. Ah, look at that. Good job. The Rays won. Sorry, I'm watching the, uh, the ALCS. Beat them fucking Astros. Yes. Sorry. Good job. Good job, Tampa Bay Rays. They're not the Devil Rays anymore. They're just the Rays. But yeah, good job. Thank God. Get those Astros, trash rows out of there. Anyways, all right. Enough about baseball. Um, Jacob. So, yeah. what do you? Um, so when it comes to the Snyder Cut, um, when you first saw when you saw the trailer during fandom, thoughts? The trailer. Yeah, a fandom. Oh, like, oh, shit, sure, I thought that was great. I I was really, um, I was at a family event, too, so I kind of had to, well, I seemed to be the only one excited about it, and I was, like, trying to get <laughs> everyone else excited. Like, look at, look at what's happening. Look at my phone. <laughs> that didn't happen. They didn't care. So, but it's like, I'm like, yeah, it was like, it's, it's what we've been just waiting for, right? Yeah. Because even then, like, yeah, when I jumped onto the movement, um, it was one day, yeah, the DVD or the Blu-ray was coming, and they didn't announce that it was going to be any director's cuts, no, nothing. Like, yeah. that's when I was starting to think, like, okay, fuck, I think something just feels wrong. Yeah. And that's when I jumped on the movement, and... How long ago was that? Like, around what time was that? Yeah. March, April, May. I don't know. What, 2018? 2018, yeah. Yeah. Early 2018. I remember that's when I started seeing more of your videos. And I mean, just whatever I saw, I don't remember what video got me to subscribe or. But <laughs> I remember I was just like, I like what this dude has to say. And I was coming across your videos a lot more. And I was just like, yep, I really like what this dude has to say more and more. So. Yeah, um, I subscribed, and here we are. Here you are. Yeah. Here you are on a live stream. Mm -hmm. Like my first live stream, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my first. first live stream? Well, there you go. Yeah. Glad to, uh, to uh, pop that cherry. Um, Mr. Darren, <laughs> when, did you, uh, when did you become aware of the, uh, the movement, or like when did you kind of join in like, hey, what the hell, man? Let's get this Snyder Cut out of here. Out of here. I think it was honestly one of your first videos where I don't know, I've been aware of it since like it first started you know yeah I know it was one of your videos that I first watched because I was already I was subscribed to you like back in 2016 oh wow because the first video the first video I saw of yours was uh the BVS ultimate edition review oh uh, okay yeah that was the very that was the very first video of yours I saw I've been aware of the movement for a while. Yeah. Like probably like I don't know exactly when, but it's since it first started, I've been aware of it. Yeah. 
it's kind of weird because you know trying to pinpoint exactly where it all started um is kind of hard i mean there are people who have, you know, that, have that posted that that hashtag pretty uh pretty quickly and um but and, and we can go back and forth i mean even today it was like i mean I, might, I woke up to my timeline a mess of like people just like yelling at each other about who's like who's been there since the beginning who's a founding member and i'm like well, i don't even get what the whole founding member kind of thing is it's like to yeah. me it's like the founding member is zach snyder <laughs> i mean he's the he's the guy that you know got it all going it's like when it comes to everybody else, I don't care if somebody joined right at the beginning or yesterday or 10 minutes ago. If you want to, you know, yeah. you want to watch this thing, you want to be part of this thing, you know, hey, welcome. To be real, I don't even see why there's still fighting going on in the movement mm. <laughs> to begin with. Like right now, I don't I don't get it because I, I just look at it like this, something that we've been wanting to see for four years that everybody's been fighting for is happening we yeah should still be celebrating but so when i see all that now i kind of just turn my head away you know Good. just keep scrolling so that's what you gotta I, do I don't, pay, I don't pay any attention to it yeah what are, well what are your thoughts jacob like do you think like when you see like this do you ever see like people like fighting and stuff like that the infighting or whatever oh uh, yeah i uh i see you retweeting yeah, sometimes I yeah I, I I might add a little fuel to the fire, but I mean I, and then I kind of like regret it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, damn it, why did I do that? I do stay out of it. I do. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's good to stay out of it because, I mean, I try my best. I'll see it a lot, you know. I'll see it and I'll just completely ignore it. But then you know, yeah. certain things I might when I see them, like okay, I'm just gonna you know just gonna put my two cents. But that's it. But then there'll be sometimes yeah where. You know, like um, like what we were talking about at first when it came to our initial reviews of of Justice League, and I'll, that that that'll be used against me. You know, like hey, here's a clip. Look at what he said. He was all about it, and I'm like, yeah, I was being as positive as shit. And then like two days later, go ahead and start pulling those videos. When I started going, hey, that was not. And I even said Zack Snyder's Justice League like, twice, I think, in one video. It, it was like two days later, literally two days like after. I think it was that following Sunday. But you know, it, it, it it's it's all it's all whatever because, like I said, we're getting the thing, we're getting the damn thing. So can we just stop? Stop. Let's all celebrate that. But I mean, it's I don't think that's it's ever going to go away because there's just certain people that. Um, I mean, this whole recent thing that happened was just because there was always like uh, an accusation of like, oh, you know, you're you're making money off the movement. You're making, you know, you're doing this. You're building up, you know, all this stuff. Always stuff that I would, uh, me and, you know, my constituents, we get accused of often. And then all of a sudden it's like one of the people from that side was literally trying to copyright something to capitalize on it, which is fine. Do what you got to do, but it's like, okay, well, then don't come after us for, you know, <laughs> doing this, essentially, writing articles or making videos. Don't, you know, just because of that. I mean, we, we try to do as much as we can when it comes to donations, you know, all the shirts and stuff like that. I try to, you know, donate and get as many shirts as possible. Which a lot of people do, but, you know, sometimes there's a lot of shirts. <laughs> I'm not going to get them all, obviously, but. You know, you know, I'll try to get as as much as possible to support the AFSP stuff. Yeah, I am. Eh, this wasn't totally spontaneous. I've been teasing it pretty much all week, William. And uh, yeah, you know, just inviting some fans to talk a little bit. So, and uh, yeah, so it wasn't too spontaneous. But um, yeah, so I mean, that's that's what all that stuff was all about today. And I tried not when I when I looked at it, I was like, I'm not even, I'm not even gonna. Yeah, it can be tempting. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, if I'm feeling a little, you know, sassy, me too. Yeah. Sometimes I'll be like, "Hey," because it's funny because uh, you know some of these guys I've met in person, and some of them, you know, like, uh, well, a particular person has actually been on a live stream with me where we try to hash it out, and it didn't really go too well. Remember that? Yep. Mm hmm. Were you there for that one? Yeah, that was. I didn't catch like maybe the first hour. I just I do remember 
it went on for a while, and yeah, that, I, I I saw the end of that, and that was all I needed to see. Yeah. You know? <laughs> What's going on, Point Dexter? What's up, buddy? Um, yeah, I know it was uh, it was one of those where it's like, all right, hey, you know, you you kind of did something where I thought it was. Yeah, you know, I always compared it to John Wick and you know the con- uh, the Continental. It's like, hey, you're not supposed to like kill on those grounds. So why did you go over to Vero and try to say that we're anti Snyder and all that stuff? So it was like, hey, let's let's talk about this not through tweets or messages. Let's talk about it through our voices and see what the fuck. And uh, yeah, it did. It didn't really. I don't know if it exactly resolved anything because, well, you know it. It's, we're still at different yeah. ends of the spectrum, me and that person, which, you know, I think some people already know who I'm talking about. I don't know if you saw it, Darren, if you saw that vodka stream, that was, that was probably like a, over a year ago. It was like a year, probably September of 2019, I think. Probably not. A lot of <laughs> yeah, time when probably. the vodka stream came on, I was at work, but yeah, I don't know, mate. probably not. Yeah. What do you do for work? Know. I'm a fast food manager. <laughs> nice. But no, uh, uh, yeah, uh, that's that's it. That's where I work at. And what what, uh, was, what restaurant? Had, what restaurant? I had three kids. Nice. Huh? What restaurant yeah. do you work at? It's a, I don't know if y'all have it out west. It's called Sonic. It's a drive-in. Yeah, we have it. We have Sonics. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they 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 started okay. coming out here. Yeah. Like probably about yeah, I think at the like I think uh, about five years ago, Sonic started sprouting out everywhere. I love Sonic actually. Yeah, I like some, the, some yeah. of the stuff that some of the desserts especially that come out of there. I'm like, I see that. I'm like, ooh, yeah, I'm gonna get yeah. that. Yes, and then, then with, Friday night. night, Friday nights, two of my old my two oldest sons are in high school, so I'm at the football games. So okay, so it's a little like when the vodka yeah. Are they f- they're so okay? I'm so they're players. Sure. They're football yeah. players. Yeah. Nice, yeah. nice. Do you, do you see them like getting scholarships, going you know the extra mile in college? What's up? Maybe. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean if they if they try, I'd stay on them all the time about trying to trying to do better. They're good kids, though. They don't get trouble or anything like that. So, oh, that's good. As long as they, as long as they go off and like be productive, like they ain't got to go off somewhere and be like famous and successful and stuff like that. As long as they're living a good life, and I, I don't care, you know. That's good. No, that's so. good. I mean, yeah, you got to instill that in people, especially nowadays. You know, because everybody, yeah, exactly. uh, nowadays everybody wants. Harder. Yeah, now it's like everybody wants to be YouTube famous or instagram famous and it's just like you know i mean if you're gonna do that you have to work hard at it it's not gonna just come naturally you can't just like post let's just post a video and it's gonna go viral it's not you know you're 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 gonna post stuff and uh and it's just there's been many times where i'm like well maybe this video will get some good traction and it just doesn't and it's like all right well really lucky yes oh yeah i mean and, and i've had videos in the past go viral you know, I, I remember one of the one of the ones that I had that went pretty uh that went viral was um you know after the the releasing of Ben Affleck's bat suit, the first one that came out, you know, it was a black and white image. So uh, everybody was like speculating, does it have color or is it just black and gray? What's going on with this? And then um I think I just did a video like of, of the possibility of it being like maybe a dark blue and blah blah blah. And I just yeah, that for some reason that video went, you know. Just took off, but you know, it's just it's not gonna be a constant thing. Sadly, I wish it was, but then I could not have a day job and I could just talk shit into a microphone all the time. But that'd be know. nice. Yeah, I know it would be nice, but it's just it that's, takes work to get there. That, that was a What's rumor up? with Pattinson's suit too, wasn't it? Like oh yeah, were they trying it's to always a rumor. rumor. <laughs> it's always yeah, a rumor yeah. about the, the color of the bat suit because it seems like well we had we had Snyder who's like all right post the black and white image you know and then when he first saw Pattinson it was like everything's red it's like so what's the colors here what's going on with the colors here and uh, both times I remember I saw people thinking that maybe it had some blue in it you know and then uh, it was just a lot of things where you know everybody say and then it's just like no nah, it's just gray and black <laughs> we're good. 
you know, the normal thing. I don't know if they'll ever. I mean, I mean, I'm I'm, I'm guessing like the next version of Batman, which is probably going to be who knows how long from now. I mean, we're you know, if 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 uh, Pattinson, of course, keeps on going with it. Um, I wonder if they'll ever try to like introduce the blue into the suit. You know, I wouldn't be against it because I like that dark blue. I don't want it to be like bright blue. Yeah. I don't want it to be like a normal regular blue. I want it to be like a navy blue. And uh, I'm not against that. You know, I was like, yeah, you want to do that? Do that, you know, see what happens. And, you know, it could look good like that. That one guy that uh, that I follow that I've been trying to get on the vodka stream. I think his name is Revizzi or something like that. I don't know. He makes oh, bat yeah. suits. Re yeah, you know what I'm talking about? Name is like yeah, I've been like trying that. to. Yeah, I've been trying to. Uh, let me see. What's his actual name here? Yeah. Reeves FX. And uh, yeah, and it's spelled yeah. R E E V Z. Um, and he actually just posted, um, uh, he just posted something recently. He posted an updated version of uh, the Adam West suit that was actually pretty cool. Uh, let me see if I pull it up here. It was like one of the last things that he posted, yeah. See, and he does a lot of stuff like you know, for short films and everything like that, but he just posted this recently, and that's pretty badass. I mean, he's, I mean, it's dark. But it's got the yellows in there, and I'm like, that's not bad at all. That. Yeah, I like that. I like <laughs> it's that. pretty cool. Yeah, you got the eyebrows that are, you know, blue and everything, and yeah. So, you know, not bad at all. I mean, I, I, I could see eventually, you know, who knows how many, maybe ten years from now. Well, when Pattinson's done, or maybe Pattinson will, some something will happen where his suit will get some blue. I doubt it because. When you watch that trailer, it's like, okay, this is a this is a dark version of Batman. It's not gonna not gonna incorporate blue, which is um, you know, which is fine, you know. But when it came to that, when it came to that trailer, when you guys saw that trailer, what did you were you blown away by it? Uh Jacob, you go first. Like like were you blown away by it? I mean, obviously we had the Snyder Cut trailer and it was like, Oh my god, it's finally here. And then all of a sudden you're like, All right, here's Matt Reeves Batman. And holy shit. Well, I personally uh, wasn't really excited for the movie because I, I think Matt Reeves is a great director. I think he's gonna make a great fucking movie. Yeah. But I'm just, I was kind of tired of Batman. <laughs> How dare you? I'm sorry. I know. I can, I can kick you out anytime, sir. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I, mean, I watched that trailer and I'm just like, yeah, it's. Uh, I don't. I feel like he's gonna surprise us. Yeah. Be, and I just it does it kind of it looks great and especially going off of what how much they filmed which is a lot I wouldn't think mm -hmm. but I mean just everything I see even looks it just looks good you know yeah it does look good I mean that trailer really and I mean I, when I watched it I was like holy shit okay yeah Matt Reeves literally had had a hold my beer moment when it came to a grounded dark batman you know because everybody looks at at nolan and they're just like yeah how are you gonna match that and he was just like hold my beer what about you darren man uh, <laughs> yeah let's put it like this i think i honestly think i probably watched that trailer more than the snyder cut trailer yeah i, I could see that, that. i watched that trailer over and over but not it's it's because it's batman batman is my favorite hero and then it also had Nirvana playing in it. Yeah. That's my favorite band. There you go. So Plus. And I don't know, man. It's, I wanted to hear Pattinson's Batman voice. We got a we got a glimpse of it. Now I want to hear Pattinson's Bruce Wayne voice. You know what I mean? I want to hear what he's gonna sound like as Bruce Wayne. Yeah. So. That's that's what I'm kind of wondering myself. Like uh how is he as Bruce Wayne? I mean, because the only clips we saw is just like, you know. I mean, he was at that funeral and then it was taking off the mask and he looking, looking emo ish, you know, that a lot of people are saying, but at the same time, I'm like, I, well, I mean, my big thing was like, wow, they're actually addressing the, 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 the makeup around the eyes. Yeah, Thank God. Every Batman movie, when he takes off the cowl, his, his eye, he don't have the eye makeup on and his hair is like Ben Affleck when he took off the cowl. Oh, it's so pretty. Yeah. It's so perfect. It's perfect. He doesn't have no, uh, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah but w- but with Pattinson, it was like his hair's a mess, and he's yeah. got the makeup around the eyes. I'm like, thank you, because I know a little bit of something about that. I did well, like I, that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. See, it adds to it because, like, I mean, like you said, you know, after I do a casual Batman video, I mean, I've posted some of the, uh, you know, the uh, the outcome after that just by doing like a 30 minute stream. It's like it gets hot. That makes me, that makes me yeah. think back to. Uh, Batman Returns. Oh right God, that was so bad. I I, me, <laughs> I don't understand. That's another. Um, that's another like situation when it comes like like the similar to um, to the whole Cavill opening Justice League thing. It's like somebody watched <laughs> that and said that's fine. Like they could have just had him like when he had the black makeup on do this and then cut to Selena, cut back real quick and then. Sh- there you go. People might have, might have still been, hey, what the hell happened to eye makeup? But they wouldn't have saw him in the mask without the eye makeup. And it's just, I, I mean, I guess that Burton just wanted the full shot of him just, and my and mind you too, that mask ripped off way too easily. <laughs> yeah, that was another thing that I, that people don't talk about. He literally rips it apart. Like I'm like, how the hell did he do that? It's like all he's gonna do is just like. You know, throw it behind him, but he ripped it off like cleanly, and I'm like, that thing already had something cut. There was a sliver of something where it, it gave him a yeah. <laughs> it was like either that or that's like some cheap ass material, man. I mean, what do you think in there? <laughs> but yeah, that that bring yeah. Going back to that, it's like so. I'm kind of curious if like you actually see him do something where he like i don't know dips his fingers in some kind of war paint and he just you know like that or does he put it does he put it on with a brush that would be kind of weird you see bruce wayne like yeah i'm going out tonight alfred makes me, <laughs> you know? makes me wonder that scene in the trailer that it shows where it shows his eyes just yeah. when he's on the motorcycle is he and about to go suit up after that or i think he is it? yeah to me, it's like when I saw that scene, I'm like, okay, we saw set photos where, you know, he's going to be on this motorcycle watching this stuff. And it's like, maybe like, yeah, if he's going to be doing that kind of stuff where he's uh, maybe just like a situation is happening where it's like, okay, maybe I'm going to have to suit up. He just kind of just puts it around his eyes and it's like, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. But but then I kind of wonder like uh, with this funeral scene when the shit happens there, it's like, is he going to have, I, I don't know. There's so many questions and that's what I love about. And I've said this too, is like when you went with the squirrel suit thing, it's like, where do you get that squirrel suit? You know, where does he is think, a they think that's going to be a squirrel suit or in poster, they're going to change it to like a cape. They right. could be. That's, that's what I'm wondering. You know, what, what about you, Jacob? What do you think when you saw that? You think yeah. it's like you think it's part of the cape or you think it's like something he stashed away? No, is that for us? Yeah. Yeah, I want to be Cape. I think they're gonna go with Cape. You think so? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think makes sense. Sense. no one had the right? Batmobile chase. Yeah, it. Yeah, I think it's gonna lead to something. I mean, it's just like, you know, I, I tweeted out that oh, this has to happen after he like grappling hooks like all the way up where all these cops are there. Maybe it's that like he just gets up there and then he gets away with that, and then I don't know if that. I mean, the whole Halloween scene, it seems like that could be like a whole different day. That's a whole different night, I think. I don't think that's going to be like the same um, the same day or same night. Um, but I think, yeah, like when all the cops, I think maybe that's where the police station. I don't know. It's it's everything so up in the air. And that's what I like when I when when they are shooting these movies out in the open, because it's like, OK, what's going on here? You know, what's what's happening and it all looks ridiculous. But then when you finally see the final product, you're like, oh, there it's see, they knew what they were doing. Cool. I, I like love, that. I love the fact we're getting uh, scenes in a Batman movie where it's raining. Am I yeah. wish for that? Like something about no. Batman where he's standing in the rain. Kind of like when Affleck was standing in the rain before he battled Superman. Yes. There's something about Batman in the rain that's just like oh, it's perfect. Some, like, gonna, shots. My my favorite my favorite Batman shot is that that shot of him in the armored suit, and it just pans over, and you see the bat signal. Ah, oh, man, it's like that. I mean, that's like the most crafted, beautiful Batman shot I've ever seen, like, ever in cinema history. Right there is that shot where it's just on him, and then it pans over. And it's raining, it's pouring rain, you see the symbol, and he's just waiting for Superman. It's like, ah, 
I just I think love, absolutely love when, he's, when he's walking out of the rubble. That's my favorite shot. Oh yeah, that shot uh, when in, when Superman dies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like yeah. literally walking into the light. Like. Yeah, it's a good shot, and it was funny too because that was in like that shot was in the original teaser, the first teaser of BBS. Yeah. You actually see I him creep one, out. I was the one on Vero that asked Snyder that question. What was his favorite Batman shot? And he actually responded to it. And That's right. That, and he said he that said shot. That was his favorite shot. So. Crazy, man. I mean, yeah, I remember that was like the first time, the first glimpse that we saw of Batfleck pretty much. I mean, we saw him obviously the still shot, but to see him like live action in that shot, I mean, it was, it was, uh, it was pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, he, actually, like, <laughs> he looked scary. He did look scary. Look intimidating. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you know what? We uh we have a we have a vodka stream regular who's also part of the Patreon. Mr. Scott McClellan decided to join. What's up, sir? I'm sorry, man. I I had to bail out of the vodka stream last night, and then I just had oh, no. to finish the Bama Georgia game. So I thought I'd pop in to say, "Hey, I got What's the email," on? and I was like, "Okay, you have to wait till the game's over." That's just how it happens. <laughs> yeah, we missed you last night. It was kind of it was interesting last night because, well, I had a feeling that you weren't going to show up because you were fairly quiet. You were fairly quiet because anytime, like you know, like in the group chat that you know Scott and I are part of. When I mentioned, I'm like, hey, I'll post a link in here. I got so and so on. Scott will usually be like, hey, cool. He'll give me like a thumbs up or something like that. He was quiet. And I was like, hmm, I don't think we're going to get some Scotty tonight. And when I posted the links to everybody, it took a bit. Like, <laughs> I was like, all right, it's just going to be me and Seek tonight talking because it seemed like uh, nobody was going to show up. And then finally, you know, Ben and uh, Garza showed up and then Colbert, of course. So. So that's opinion. why that's the way it went on for three hours and fifty minutes. Okay, that yeah. makes complete sense now. <laughs> that's why. Even even Steven said that at the end. He was like, he was like, oh, sorry if it went a little too longer because I joined late. I was like, nah, it's totally fine. It's totally well, Darren, fine. Darren here. Uh, so are, we, are you laugh now, cry later? Yes, that's him. Nice to finally meet you, man. It's nice seeing you in the chat. <laughs> Say something, too, Darren. Buddy. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Yeah. You obviously see I have no uh, problem saying hi uh, to just about anybody. <laughs> yeah, it froze it must have froze up because that we just thought you were just like staring at me for no reason. And <laughs> like reading up again. Yeah, no, oh. it happened. <laughs> it happens. Uh yeah, no, we were like, wait a minute, is say something there? No, no, no. Okay, good, good. Yeah. Now I think you know what's funny? I think what happens to you is sometimes with StreamYard, it's like you know, when multiple people start like showing up, sometimes there's like one person that ends up like getting really glitchy, you know. And yeah, and that happened to Tim the first time he yes. went on. Yeah. Oh, he was, he was all pixely. He was all pixely. And, and it's like, I don't understand exactly why it does that, but you know, it does do that. And it, it's, 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 it's odd. I don't know if they fixed it, but apparently not. You know, yeah, yeah, I, I, I guess I get to be the glitchy one. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky you, you get to be the glitchy one, man. I know. It happens, but um, no, yeah. Last Yay. night was uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, was a, it was a good stream last night. You know, Seek. I love talking to Seek. You know, we we became good friends um, over the years, and he's just like he's just a just a. I, I actually, you know, one of these days, I hope to get both you and Seek on Scott because I mean, he's just a fucking encyclopedia of knowledge <laughs> when it comes to. When it comes to comic books, he knows. I mean, he was talking about, you know, there was like a, oh, yeah, you guys should, should read this this Batman um, series called uh, Night Cries. And he just mentioned like just certain like books and stuff like that that people need to read. And, you know, he's had his toe dipped into the industry. And he's just like just a, just a vat of knowledge. And, uh, I mean, you you mentioned anything. And all of a sudden he's like, oh, that well, this happened in, you know. Batman issue, blah blah blah. You know, oh, just, I've met my I've met my brother apparently. Yes, pretty much, pretty much. I mean, I mean, either your brother or your match. I don't know. I mean, whatever. Oh no, that, I mean, he. It sounds like he would he would even like. It's. I'm not sure if it's like different eras. I mean, I I'm the first person to admit that I go deep. Yeah, but I've got my holes. Yes. Yeah. You know? oh, of course. So. We all. I mean, it's impossible to like. <laughs> to have, I mean, there's so much out there. I mean, when you like told me about Batman Ego, I'm like, I don't know about this. And then what did I do? I went on Amazon, and now it's sitting in my bookshelf 
you know, ready for me to read, which I'm going to get to one of these days because you recommended it. Same with Dune, the, the book you sent me, which well, I'm going to get to that too. And then we'll have our, well, we we'll got have a little bit more time book. now because who knows when that movie is actually going to come <laughs> out. So jeez, I know. I know. I, I, yeah, I bought. Yeah, we got a year when that's gonna that's gonna eventually be coming out. But yeah, I definitely want to get the book read before um, before I see the see the movie, and then of course revisit the uh, the David Lynch version, which I know, you know, it's a little, it's got some iffy parts, but at the same time, it's it's a classic. It's it is a it's a cult classic if nothing else. I mean, I even own it digitally just because. I mean, it's like it's a movie. I grew up watching it why not yeah you know? yeah i mean you got a you got a ripped oiled up sting <laughs> in there i mean my god he was ripped as shit in that movie Jeez. yeah he was yeah, yeah he was with some weird incestual feelings going on with baron harkonnen that are not in the book at all like i was like looking for it i was like oh please tell me this is like actually in the book no that's that's like that's none of that. None of that's there. None of that's in the book. Yeah, I know. It must be. It must be uh, an interesting process, like when when they try to adapt in a, a book, because I mean, it's all laid out there. It's like, I mean, how many times have we? Um, how many times have you read a book and you're just like, this would be a great movie? And it's like, okay, yeah, in the right hands, but you just like sometimes you just never know like how it how it's gonna go. And even like you know, one of my all time favorite movies is Fight Club. And I've read the book and it's, yeah, it's, it captured it pretty well, but it's not in the same order. It's definitely not no, like it jumps, no. it jumps all over the place. And it's like, okay. The oh, ending yeah. is completely different. Yes, completely different. And you're just kind of like, okay, but you understand you're like, well, it wasn't going to work probably here. And David Fincher was like, he knew this and did something great. And then, you know, with Poloniak, it's like, yeah, he's just, I mean, I, I have, you know, a slew of books from him. He's one of my favorite authors. And it's like some of the shit that he <laughs> comes up with. I mean, Jeez, I know. No, I went through I went through a phase where I was like one summer. It was just like checking out every one of his books I could get from the library. Did you, um, did you read Doomed? Uh, yes. Yes. Judy. Bl it's a, essentially a Judy Bloom book. Yes. But it's a place in hell. Yes, I mean, that's how it it, is. that's how it's explained. Judy Bloom book in hell, pretty much. Oh, and then, and then there's a sequel in Purgatory. Yes, yes, per yes. And it's like, I mean, it's it's insane. And I'm going, how could they even try to pull this movie off? Because it's like, it's about a little girl. I don't know how old she's like, 12, I think 12, 13. 12, 13, yeah. yeah. And she dies and goes to hell. <laughs> and <laughs> it is just and, he, and even so Satan's like, you're an annoying piece of shit. I yes. don't even want to put up with you. <laughs> Yes. Oh, it's... okay. Are you ready for me to like totally like make you jealous right now? Yes. Since you're such a fan. I have a leather bound copy of Fight Club. Oh man. Inscribed to me from Chuck. <laughs> it says thank wow. you, Scott McClellan, oh. for your for your support. Yeah. Signed to me because there's a Kickstarter. Uh have you ever read his book Lullaby? I haven't read Lullaby yet. Ooh, no. that's a good one. Check that out. It okay. it's it's like this. You it's this book, and you read this lullaby, and it like kills you or people around you and stuff. And they uh, are okay. they did a Kickstarter years ago because you know how Kickstarters can I mean, be sometimes. Yeah, and uh, they're adapting it into a movie. Damn. Damn. And I was a support, and I was a supporter for it. And so my reward was I got that personally autographed copy of Fight Club. Yeah. Sorry, I got a little distracted by Miss Amanda Colbert's. Uh, comment right here. Sorry for the record. Polonic wrote about pools and buttholes famously. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh man. Have you ever read? Um, oh my God. I cannot believe I'm blanking on it. Uh, the, the one about the, I think the transgender fashion model. One. Oh, 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 um, uh, gotta have it up there. Um, yeah. Cause it's about, ah, shit. Dolphin? no, 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 no. It's the mon monster yeah. something. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Running to running to the shelf. Yes. Yeah, we don't. I don't know what what's. Oh no. no! This is like weird. I mean, you want to talk about weird crap? I mean, it is just the things that goes on in this man's mind that he puts on. Like, I I just read it, kind of going. Like, there's even one book, Invisible Monsters. Invisible Monsters. Yes. Okay. There's a there's a there's another version. There's like the director's cut version. Uh, okay. 
You need to check that one out. Okay, but, I definitely will. Yeah. And then there's the one that's like the uh, like the porn star that's trying to like have like the like the record amount of sex with different yes. partners of the course that, of one day. Was that rant? No, no, rant no. Uh, I think I have that one too. I'm not, I'm not gonna run back over there. Don't worry. No, I, but I, you know what? I'm I'm just gonna go, I'm just gonna Google that. And I'm totally like losing poor Jago. He's like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Like, <laughs> yeah, no. trust me, it's, it's weird. Really it's a weird. Uh, stream right here. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> now, but uh, 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 see, I'm just uh, information because just, <laughs> what I didn't even know the Mike Club was a book. Yeah, it's a oh, book. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm just soaking in information because I had, yeah. I had no idea. I had no idea. Okay. Yeah. Snuff. Snuff. That's what it was. Snuff. Yes. It's a really, it's a really good book too. I mean, yeah. it's, um, I've both read it and listened to the audio book because I remember I finished listening to the audio book the same day that Days of Future Past came out in theaters. Mm. There it is. No, yeah, there's snuff, there's choke, there's rant. I mean, he has a lot of like, uh, well, yeah, one word, uh, one word um, titles for his stories. Um, what I like about the guy is just like, it's, uh, have you read Fight Club 2, Scott? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How meta did that fucking thing get? Have you read? Yeah, I st I've got Fight Club 3, but I haven't, I haven't read, read it yet. yet. Yeah. I haven't read it yet. Yeah, no. I love, I, I love the fact that he made it into a graphic novel. It was like yes, dude. with uh, David Mack doing the covers and mm -hmm. Dave Stewart. That's something really cool because the graphic novel, even in that meta way, addresses it's a sequel to the novel mm -hmm. while acknowledging the differences between the novel and the movie. Yeah, it does. It it definitely does that. And then all of a sudden, it's like, I mean. It, like I said, it gets very meta where, you know, the possibility that the author himself might even show up in the thing. It's it's insane. It's insane. I'm like, there's no way that they're going to make this into a movie. No. I mean, yeah. But that's the thing when it comes to adaptations is that, yeah. like, I, I don't automatically get angry when things are changed. I think yeah. that's just, you know, I guess that's why I just tend to, I don't get into these arguments. It's just kind of like, okay, it. it's it's different. My only big thing is like when they make a change and I'm like, why? Yeah. Like, it's like you, it, like it's sometimes like, I understand why you make a change from a, from a book to a movie. They're two different mediums. You got to make some differences, but sometimes it's like, you just made that change for the sake of making a change. And I'm sorry, your change was not as creatively satisfying as, as the source material. Yeah. And that's when I just kind of go, Nope. Yeah. Peace have out. you read his uh have you read his book Haunted that has like numerous different stories? Yeah. Yes. Great. Great stuff. Yes. Great stuff. Great stuff. Great and there. I yeah. also just bought his book on writing. And oh, okay. consider have, this. Yeah, I have uh Stephen King's book on writing, which is on, so good. on writing. Oh yeah. yeah. That one, that's a that's a great one for any writer. On writing's a great one. And also uh Ray Bradbury's Zen in the Art of Writing. Yeah. Okay. I'll have to pick that one up, but uh, my next book, of course, I'm going to be reading is Dune, which uh, thank you, Scott, again for sending that copy to me. Awesome. Oh no! It, once again, it just gave me an excuse to, <laughs> to look at that thing. To buy another one. <laughs> look at that blue pages and everything. I love oh, it. Oh, and uh, ooh, what else? What else? Well, hold on, blue pages. Uh, gorgeous little in oh, my in God. papers here, and I think if I remember correctly, there's also like oh, where is it? There's a there's a map in here. There's a oh yeah, here it is. This is just like what the what's on the dust jacket. Wow, look at that. So well, and I'm gonna good. jump off because yeah, I I was, actually, I was actually gonna like say uh, I'm gonna go ahead and like uh, round up like you guys to like push you guys off, you know, and then I'm gonna get uh, some other people in here. And uh, but I, of course, since you guys were, you know, the patrons of the oh, phone junkie, oh, like, um, Empire, I appreciate you guys. Go. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, ask a question. If you guys have one more question, go ahead. <laughs> I got I got a question for you and Scott. Okay. Okay. All right. So uh, how true do y'all think the uh, how tr true do y'all think the Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield rumor is? Oof. Well, okay. So, which rumor are you talking about? The rumor that he's he's gonna be in there, or the rumor that that it's not been confirmed? <laughs> I 
Like, do you think it's going to eventually happen? I think it will. I think, well, I think, I think it will. I think Sony. I think it was right. I think Sony wants it to happen. Yes, and I think that, that's a, and, yeah. yeah. They all want it. They all know. Like, I mean, I mean, that's one of the things when it comes to the way things are now. I mean, the fact that like you almost think that sometimes, and I think this does actually happen. Is like, okay, let's just leak this out to like a super, and he'll get it out there and see the reaction. Let's get the reaction. They're, to they're it. testing. They're doing. They're doing a test. It's like what Warner Brothers in DC would do with their animated movies, or or uh, guest characters guest starring the TV shows. It's proof of concept. Yes. They want to know what is the reaction to it without committing to it. And once they do an animated movie, or like when they put Deathstroke on Arrow, and he became like super popular, it was like, oh, cool. Yeah, this cost us like no money. It's like free market research. Oh cool. my god, this, this costs us nothing. And I, yeah. so when they leak stuff like that, that's exactly what they're doing. Oh, yeah, they're like, how is the internet going to react? Oh, the internet loves this idea. Yeah, and I think that when they, when they put out information like so, you know, this movie's in development. They want to see the reaction because sometimes you hear about <laughs> stuff in development and then it just disappears. Like, what happened to that? What, what there was like something there's a death stroke movie what the hell happened you know and uh, i think they just look at that and like you know they just yeah they yeah, they measure the an analytics and whatever yeah uh jacob did you have anything else before uh you step out no but i do really want to see i wish that death stroke movie happened i, really I know yeah. hopefully it does i mean with hbo max maybe like there's something that they could do because it seems like hbo max is like hey whatever you guys have send it our way you know and uh the fact that they just need to fill their content to fill their library and um and the fact that you know the movie theaters the way they are right now i mean why the fuck not man just anything you guys have why not but uh i appreciate you guys uh joining me tonight and uh you know it's been great and like i said you know uh scott i'll probably see you next week and uh when it comes to jaron and jacob thank you for thank you for being a supporter and thank you for being always in the live chat guys and hope to talk to you guys uh soon for sure all right take my money dave <laughs> just take my money <laughs> That's what i'm doing so of course taking your money and taking your books all right we'll talk to you guys later bye all right Cool. All right. So the first round of uh, people have uh, made their way through. I'm going to go ahead and get myself another beer now. All right, guys. Now, when it comes to you guys that follow me on Twitter, follow me on Twitter, send me a DM, send me a DM and I will send you, I'll drop you a link. Okay. Uh, let's see, Dave, you just used the clip I sent. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do right now is uh, I'm going to send out more links, but only to uh, Twitter followers. Send me a DM. And uh, as I uh, refresh my beer here, <laughs> I don't think Garza is not going to show up. It's not over yet. It's not over yet. Arib. Don't worry. That was just the patrons. Okay. Cause you know, Scott, he's a supporter. I love that. He's a good guy. So um, what I'll do is like, like I said, um, if you follow me on Twitter, go ahead and, um, in the next like minute, minute and a half, go ahead and, uh, hit me up and say like, Hey, send me the link and, uh, I'll shoot you over a link. All right. <laughs> I, let's see if they get flooded. I'm not going to have everybody. I know what you're saying to hidden shadows. It's going to be like the first, it's going to be like the first like couple, th you know, few people. If you guys don't get on, I apologize, but I'm going to try to get a try to get people on as much as possible. All right. So let me refresh the beard. And I'm back. All right. Uh, I'm looking at Twitter right now, and it turns out Kirstie Alley and Jim Carrey are both trending right now. I already know why Kirstie Alley is, because she said she was going to support Trump. So, of course, everybody's trying to cancel her. Uh, Jim Carrey's manic. In okay, so. Oh. Oh, apparently... Joe is channeling. What the hell? Okay, so apparently it has to do with Saturday Night Live. 
That's what it is. There are people that are not liking his Joe Biden, and there are people that are. So that's why. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Okay. So, all right. We're hitting. All right. Let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and send some invites out. We already got some people in the Twitter sphere that are requesting here. All right. So, send you one. Just a link. All right. So you got people. Let's see. All right. All right. Sending out some links, guys. Boop. All right. All right. So the first first thing of links are out. Let's see. Uh, let's see who's joining here. All right, we got Mr. Andrew. What's up, sir? Hey, Dave. Hey, how you doing, man? Good. First time yeah, meeting you. Yeah, I know. So that's the yeah. So that's what you look like uh, behind the uh, the Spider Man avatar. <laughs> yeah, you've been liking all my questions. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, how's it going tonight? It's going good. Good. I see. Okay, so you have a picture of Fenway Park in the background. I see. Oh yeah. So are, I, I take it you're a you're a Boston Red Sox fan? Yeah, I'm, I'm living in Arizona right now. Mm. Okay, so you're living in Arizona. Cool. Um, so how's it going? Like, man, we got more people joining in right now. Let's see. Hold on. Looking up already. Yeah, it's gonna be kind of a party. Like I said, when it comes to the Twitter crowd, we got Mr. Fear Jason. What's up, sir? Yeah, what's we got up? Will Morris and we got William. What's going on? Hey, what's going on, man? Mr. Sci-Fi uh, Center. Yep, I'm here right now. As a matter of fact. Okay. Yeah. I've actually uh, met William in person the last time I was in Vegas. Stopped yeah. by, stopped by the uh, Sci-Fi Center shop, and uh, yeah, I tried to burn the city down. Yeah, I know. It was during a fire, of course. When I show up to Vegas. There was a freaking fire, and it was like, oh, yeah, of course. They welcome me here with a fire. But um, Mr. Fear Jason, what's going on, man? How you doing? Up, Dave? Hey. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. You're good. Right. You're good. Right, thanks. Uh, thanks. Yeah. All right, Mr. William Morris, what's up, man? What's going on, Mr. Morris? What's going on? Not much. How about you? I like your posters. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely got some backgrounds. It's always interesting to see people's backgrounds when they uh, do live streaming. Uh, Fear Jason, that bed looks cozy. I'm just saying, it looks it looks very it's cozy. cozy. <laughs> Definitely is cozy. Ah, uh, so how are you guys doing tonight? I'm doing, doing great. Right. Working late. Doing great. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're where? Okay, so William, you're still working at the uh, the center tonight, or what? Yeah, we're here till eleven, and I'm just moving some stuff around, recataloging some stuff, getting ready for some events that are happening in the next couple of weeks. Okay. And, I, remember, uh, I remember when I showed up, like there was uh there was some kind of performance thing that was happening where you guys had the a big huge green screen and yeah, you guys, yeah, they were running an acting class in our our uh, our broadcast screening area. And uh they were that was actually the last of those classes when you were here. I mean, in like yeah. a half hour later they were done. So uh, we couldn't even move around the store. I would have loved to have shown you around, but they were eating up a good eighty percent of the store at the time. So Yeah, it was kind of bad. Around. It was a little bit of bad timing just because, um, you know, it was Sunday and I, we, we just went out to dinner and it was like, yeah, it was towards the end of the night. So sadly, okay. I'm still hearing this clickety clickety sound. I know going for Will. Is it Will? Hey. No, no, hold on. Let's see. I'm going to, I'm going to go through. Let me, uh, yeah. I think it might be, yeah, it might be Will. It might be you, Mr. Morris. Okay. There's two. Yeah. Williams. Yeah. There is two Williams here. It's, right. it's it's interesting because are you on your phone, Will? Yeah, are you on your phone? Yeah, I'm on my phone. I'm wondering if that's yeah. why because I think it was when when Darren was here, he was on his phone and it was making that noise too. So I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Try try the headphones thing if you can. Yeah. I feel like I've made it. I mean, all my Give accomplishments in life. This, this is what it was all added to. Yeah. You know? What what's that? I feel like I finally made it. I mean, all my accomplishments in life was just to get on the film junkie, and I've there done it. Go. I don't know, know if there's anything I, I need to do after this. What, what, what's left? <laughs> it's you all know? downhill from here, man. It's yeah. all downhill from here. No, no, I know. Going to porn next or something. Yeah. Like no, this was just one of the things that uh, that uh, I wanted to do. You know, just to like talk to just people because I've. 
I even said it before, like uh, when I was doing like the uh, Android stuff, I did something like this before. And I was like, you know, that's fun to do that just to have people that, you know, that are always watching the videos, always watching the live streams, you know, talk to them. I mean, it was always like that little bit of worry. That's why I was like, I thought at first, I'm like, maybe I should just post a live stream or post a link on my Twitter and see what happens. I'm like, maybe not. But I think like, so the end, success. yeah, yeah. I'm like, I don't know who might show up. And that kind of worried me a little bit, but then I was like, all right, hit me up in the DMS. We'll do it like that. And then well, I, mean, I think like towards the end, I'll probably like throw it into the live chat. And if anybody in the live chat wants to join, I'll do that. But uh, right now it's, it's all about the Twitter guys. So Mr. Andrew, since you're a Spider-Man fan and one of the last things that we talked about uh, with the last, uh, with the patrons, um, what are your thoughts about what's happening over there in that Spidey verse? Oh, yeah. or what? Um, apparently now that Sony says that those rumor castings of Toby and Andrew are not confirmed. Yeah. Well, that they have to say that because I think they're kind of saving face a little bit. That well, now, yeah. Well, now they're saying that um, uh, we're gonna get a first look at the movie in December. What already? Yeah, I was surprised to myself. I didn't see it came from a, It was from a Sony exec. Wow, interesting. Because I remember, like, uh, I mean, they're filming it right now, right? Yeah, so I bet they'll have some footage. I mean, the Batman was only half done, and we got a good trailer. Yeah. All right, we got Mr. Uh, let's see, we got another person here, Mr. Legend. Uh, I forgot what's your full what what's your full uh, name there. Oh, it's Brendan, right? Brendan. Yeah. Uh oh, his mic. Oh. Mic on, mic off. Okay, you're good. Okay, well, his mic off right now. Hey, my oh, man. There it is. What's up, man? How you doing? I'm doing good, man. How about you? Doing pretty good, man. You got bigger glasses than I do. Look at you. Yeah. Maybe. Is it, yeah. He's actually knew I got these like a week ago. Nice. Well, they look good. All right. And then we got one more person who hit me up on the Twitter. Uh, we got, okay. We got Mr. Carey here. And let's see. Hold on a sec. Yeah, for Colbert, we ain't talking, so. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're waiting for, I'm waiting for it. Carrie, I'm waiting for your, uh, this device is not connected. All right. Now it's there. No, uh, but going back to the Spider Man thing, Andrew, I mean, yeah. It looks I mean, like Amanda wrote my voice. Yeah, <laughs> right. Um, I didn't hear about the, uh, the Sony thing. So that's interesting. Yeah. It was just, it was just yesterday. Yeah. So it was just yesterday. I'm going to have to look that up because, I mean, there was that little fake teaser that came out. I saw that. Yeah, it was actually pretty good. I mean, I, I actually got fooled myself a little bit. I'm not gonna lie. Like when I saw it, I'm like, really? They already got footage? But I'm like, okay, that could work. I mean, yeah, fast turnaround just to like build up hype. But I mean, it was obviously fake. But then now they're actually filming, so I wouldn't be surprised if like by the end of the year they have some kind of footage that's happening there. What's going yeah, on? And I mean, like, um... hello, can you guys hear me? Yep, you were yeah, on. I muted for some reason. <laughs> You're good. Now, what were you gonna say, Andrew? Sorry, I was thinking like, um, if Toby and Andrew aren't in Spider Man 3, I'm like, maybe like, say it's like post credit scene, it could be like, um, we see like Tom and Dr. Strange together, two portals open, two yeah. men walk out. Tom uh, says, Who are you guys? and they, they say, Where are you, Peter, from the universe? They take off their masks to reveal Toby and Andrew and say, We need your help. The multiverse is in danger. Credits. Oh, look at you. Writing a good ending right there. Nice little cliffhanger. Wouldn't be uh would be pretty awesome. Uh Mr. Fear Jason. So you've done some art for me, which I appreciate, sir. And you've also um you've made some Funko Pop style figures as well. Um, you're making all that with a 3D printer, right? That what you said? Yes. Yep. Yeah. But like the base that you have them on, I thought, I mean, honestly, I don't know if you guys have seen <laughs> some of the stuff. I thought he was actually carving them out of wood. Like, because you have like the base that looks like a like like it's from wood, right? Is that yeah. the style you're kind of going for? Yeah, I was just like a random cup holder with like laying around. I just picked that up and put it on top of it. Oh, okay, that's pretty mm -hmm. cool. No, like he fooled me. I was like, that's why I asked you. Uh, I was like, man, I'm like, are you carving these out of wood? Are you, are you painting them and stuff like that? I was like, holy crap! Uh, 3D printing actually. Um, fascinates me because i actually have a buddy of mine who got really into it and he actually made me um i have it sitting on my uh, tv stand it's been there for a bit he made me a, a a baby groot who's just like sitting and he's just looking up 
And it's it's crazy how good this damn thing is when it comes to uh, 3D printing. Um, how long have you been doing the 3D printing? For a long time. Yeah? Yeah. That's like my new printer I was working on. Mm -hmm. and, that's, and this is my new project I've been working on. Oh, look at that. He's working on something, JL. Uh-oh. It's oh, like a concept. Look at that. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. so it's like a little case, huh? What's yeah. in the box? <laughs> What's in the box? Yeah. Probably this. Oh, uh, there you go. Yeah. Once that gets released, yeah, put that in there. That's pretty badass. I like that. These damn kids, man. Back, we were happy to have Atari. <laughs> now they got 3D print. I was yeah. happy with Tom. Now yeah, it's it's the print. That's, that's the way it is, man. I mean, nowadays it's like it's crazy. So, Jason, do you do like do you sell on like Etsy? Do you sell any of your stuff, or is it just for fun? Just for fun. Okay. Okay. Mostly hey, like the design. Okay. Have you ever thought about like doing any kind of, you know, selling? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I know Etsy is like good for that. That's what my, uh, my buddy who's also in the 3d printing, he, um, uh, he does, he, he puts his stuff on Etsy, you know, and he was actually making like a good, um, uh, a good income from him. I'm not going to lie. I mean, he was, uh, he was doing stuff for like Fortnite stuff and like, uh, I forgot what the other, I think Warcraft figurines and stuff like that too. So, he was doing, making all kinds of stuff with all that, with his 3D printer. And uh, yeah, I mean, he actually made me a battering too. The battering, which is also sitting over there, which I've used many times in a video. He made me like this battering that actually like folds in and everything like that. And he painted and I was like, the oh. like battering. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> it's not. Sadly, not. It. I should have asked him. I'm like, can you make it like the fat bat? Can you do that, please? Make it that one. But uh, no, it's still pretty cool though. Uh yeah. I think it once had a Christian Bale Batman battery. Right? Yeah, and that's not the tiny little guy. Nah, nah. It's a, it's more of like I would say it's more of the Arkham style. Uh, Ooh, that yeah, one too. Or, yeah. I would say it's more of that. So it's pretty cool. Um, so Legend, um, Brandon, Yo. right? Um, yeah. So okay, so um, are do you also have a channel or a podcast, or am I just making that up? <laughs> um, I mean, I actually do have a podcast, but. I don't okay. like. I haven't posted it on my Twitter, so I don't think you would know about it. But I just started with my friend as like a first fun type of thing. Okay. And you guys just talk about obviously like nerdy stuff and all that stuff, you know? All yeah, that fun. it's like all about like movies. Uh huh. Like he's a huge movie guy, so we just do a bunch of like what's his name? Reviews. What's his name? His name's Carlos. Carlos. Okay. Yeah. The Carlos. name of the, it's a uh, unofficial movie critics. If anyone wants to check it out, uh, okay. I'll plug you real fast. There you go. Plug it. Hey, take a drink. Anybody? No, um, yeah. no, no, no. It's cool. Like, uh, when did you start your podcast? We probably, probably about like a month ago. Yeah. Like okay. A month ago. So, so just getting we've actually gotten a few listens. So it's like pretty cool. We've had a few people actually like give us like good feedback. So it's been pretty cool. Yeah. Feedback's good. I mean, when you're trying to do this stuff, it's like, <laughs> I mean, you know, when you do it live, it's like, instant feedback which is like whoa crazy you know <laughs> which uh, obviously you know a lot of you guys are in the, uh, the, the yeah. chat which i appreciate and stuff and then of course uh mr william who's uh part of the sci-fi center uh now last time i talked to you william you were still doing part-time at like uh you had a part-time job are you still doing that or are you full-time sci-fi center i'll do that until i clock in they say and they say i'm no longer an employee because <laughs> i'm cheap and i'm greedy yeah um, no, and right now I, uh, like I said, I'm trying, I'm like a squirrel anywhere I can, you know, scare up money and keep it somewhere. Um, if you'd asked me that question a year ago, I'd have been like, you know what, let, let me aim for retirement. But right now, um, I, you just don't know what's going on. And it's as long as I have something good and stable on both ends, I'm just going to keep it. There you go. That's what you got to do. I mean, especially nowadays, you know, and it sucks too. Cause I think one of the things we talked about, uh, when I went and saw you, cause I mean, the pandemic happens and to try to run, a type of shop like you know that that you have that has comic books and sci-fi memorabilia and stuff like that i mean that must i mean that that hits you pretty hard with the business yeah you just got to be creative like right now we're, we're we're obviously we're still open we're we're doing events we're doing things that um even once the pandemic is over will be you know it'll set us aside from certain other industries so Right now, and tourism is down, obviously, because obviously a lot of people can't travel. Uh, yeah. tr my foreign tourists can't come over. A lot of them don't want to come over right now because they don't want to get on a plane. 
But there are still some people out there. We have our app. We have our online sales. So I, I'm still finding a way to get it done. It's just a little bit tighter than it was pre-March. But, hey, you know, like I said, creativity, that's, that's what will drag us all through it. That's what it does, man. I mean, no, it's a cool, it's a cool place. I mean, you had a, you guys had like stuff. I mean, obviously I couldn't see like get the full tour because of the, uh, the performance that was happening, but, um, and then of course, William was nice enough to give me a Han Solo frozen and carbonate poster, which, uh, yeah, why isn't that hanging in the back? I know it should be. I'm sorry. I'm getting that. I'm, I want to get it framed to be honest. I'm like, when it comes to just like regular posters up, I'm like, I don't want regular posters. I want framed stuff now because all the framed stuff that I have, I'm like, it looks so much better than this, just the posters. So I have, frame. yeah, I know it's going to be a big frame. I know because it's actually long. I mean, it's, it's like, it's, it's, it's a good, it, it's a good size. It's, it's got some good length to it. So, but I'm like, you know what? I want to do that. I want to, uh, uh, well, I'll figure out something with that because I still got to frame, um, this right here, the sticker that's on behind my um, behind my my laptop right here from Victor Koo, he sent me over the actual you know poster of this, and I'm like, all right, definitely got to frame that too. So, but of course, with the pandemic stuff, it was like, where am I going to go? All these places are closed, especially in California. They're not opening stuff up. My God, so it'll happen, and I'm gonna, I because I really love that poster, but I'm like, I I want it framed. I'm gonna get it framed. So in a week, every time I tune in and it's not there. I'm uh, see? Okay. Eventually I'll have it there. Eventually I'm going to show it off when it has a nice frame to it. And I, you know, I figure out, well, obviously I'll have to bring it right here, but I'll, I'll definitely show that off on the vodka stream. Mr. Will Morris. What's up? All right. So do I have you on mute? No, you're, are you on mute yourself? You Wait, you're good. Or did I mute you? Sorry. All right. Yeah, you're good. Okay. Mr. Will Morris. Got, um, yeah. Wait. You good? I think he's frozen. All right, cool. I think he's a little frozen, too. Oh, uh, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sadly, like, we're just, for some reason, your video is not working. I don't know. It could be a stream yard I'm thing. I'm in a bad cell service. Oh, uh, is that what it is? Okay. So you got some cool posters. Okay, so do you have a poster of when uh, Batfleck is, like, looking up at, you know, after the bat signal, is that what yeah, I'm behind you? Cool shot. Yeah. Uh -huh. Where'd yeah. you get that poster? Yeah, yeah I got it. Poster. That's My awesome. Dad yeah. like a lot. He me at Who's Walmart that? back in 2016. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, Who's at Walmart? Uh, Wonder Dang. Woman, Justice League. Uh huh. Yeah. In game, Suicide Squad, Flash. Uh huh. Yeah. You got all that right there, but no, I just I'm like, man, I want that poster. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. What's up, Andrew? <laughs> um, just recently I was looking at these videos of like like what ifs or fanfics. I thought of like um what if um the MCU Spider-Man was was Toby instead of Tom or what if Edward Norton stayed. Oh man, that would have been yeah. I mean, maybe they'll tackle that. I mean, if they get the thing is, okay, so when it comes to like the whole, a lot of this multiverse stuff, you know, when it comes to, I mean, the only thing I know about when it comes to like the deals and, and the logistics, when it, um, when it comes to like these contracts, um, don't, do not expect Michael Keaton to just be a one off flashpoint. Yeah, I think of course. On. I think he signed on and I think we're going to get a Batman Beyond. And yeah, I hope you, know, you see him it, every day saying, I'm Batman, even though, I'm yeah. Pepper. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I think that w what I was told from, uh, you know, individuals that I talked to is the fact that it, it that he was holding off because he was like, no, this is not going to be a one off. I want to do something else with this, not just like show up in this and that's it. I think I mean, who knows when that's going to be announced or if that's ever going to. And then there was the whole thing of like, is Tim Burton going to come back and direct it, which. Well, I don't think Tim Burton's style could fit a Batman Beyond. Yeah, I know. But at the same time, it's like I almost want it because it's like. I want to have that trilogy, you know, Batman 89, Batman Returns, and Batman Beyond, and it all be Keaton and Tim Burton. I kind of would like love to have that in my, you know, library, you know. But yeah, I, but I, I would like the idea, but I just thought like the, yeah. the 89 return was like early his career, and then Beyond was go <laughs> more into the future. They're pretty like 70 now. I don't think it I don't think it connects like it does when he was in his these 38. I mean, he's literally 69 years old. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, like it's. It, I always find. I always uh, comment on that too. I always say that 
when they tapped Tim Burton to do the 89 Batman, he was just like, he didn't know. I mean, he, you know, he, he wasn't a comic book collector or anything like that. It surprised me when I read about it. Yeah. And it was just like, okay, so he's going to tackle this, but he wanted to take some inspiration. I mean, when you watch it, it's like, yeah, it's not, it's not totally. I mean, when you look at Bruce Wayne, you're like, really, this guy really was in the league of shadows. This guy, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like Michael Keaton was a random choice for sure. Well, hey Dave, what's up? On this uh, Spider-Man multiverse, Tobey Maguire and all that, am I the only one that thinks this is a wretched idea? <laughs> Maybe. I think it's a horrible idea. Oh, it's believer. Okay, <laughs> and here's why. Yeah. Okay. When Sony was going through its its whatever they were going through with with Marvel and Disney, I was oh, rooting good. for them to break up. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, I think a lot of us were actually. Yeah, <laughs> because I think Disney Sony is, is more than Spider-Man. capable of making a Spider-Man movie uh, without Marvel. And I think the the Iron Man Jr. and the fact that Marvel <laughs> always seems to think that they need to bring in someone else, you realize that Spider-Man is literally the logo, is literally the symbol, the face of Marvel Comics. Yeah. And every movie I've seen him in in Disney, he's basically, he might as well have a sidecar for Tony Stark. Even in the movie, <laughs> Tony Stark was dead. He was dead and far from home. Can, and he still uh, found a way to yeah. fix his way into that. Can I add something? So, that? No, why go, don't we, yeah, hold on. Let, let but, okay. okay, but here, here's the thing. I think the multiverse thing would be a perfect way to basically separate the Sony universe from Marvel and basically let them let Sony do their movies without they don't need that support from Marvel anymore. Yeah, they have the main guy. Yeah, like that. yeah, go ahead, Andrew. What were you going to respond? Yeah, because um, I agree with everything you say. I thought that Disney did not know how to handle Spider Man. That's why I think that Toby and Sam Raimi uh, knew the, the character more and they buy them more. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, I, mean, I um, think I think like um, when I um, God, I had a thought and then I just totally like lost it right now. <laughs> but um, no, 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 no. Like um, uh, the the fact that it's like, oh uh, yeah, that's what I was getting at. When it came to the whole Tom Holland thing and, and Spider Man and everything, where you know, I think Sony knew what they had because I mean, when it comes to when it comes to like um, products that are like you know, when it comes to worldwide and their value, I mean, Spider Man's like next to Coca Cola and Batman. I mean, Batman is like it, it, it's close. I mean, he is their most valuable IP. That's yeah. a fact. Yeah, and that's what's so funny about it. It's like uh, I agree with DT Films. Yeah, and then like. Um, um, when it, when it came, when it comes to like, how, how are they going to utilize them? I mean, I don't, I, I, I get people's gripes when it's like, oh yeah, he's iron boy or iron man junior or whatever the fuck, you know, I, I totally get that. I totally get that when people say that, because it's like, yeah, you want him to be his own man. But at the same time, I'm like, it is different from what we previously saw. saw. Cool. But then I was kind of hoping after we saw that scene, that, that mid credit scene in, um, in, in far from home where it's like, oh, now he's going to be wanted. And now. J. Jonah Jameson is out there saying like, oh, it's Peter Parker. Look at what Mysterio posted and everything. I'm like, cool. He's going to be on his own and everything. And then all of a sudden they go, yeah, Doctor Strange is going to act like the mentor. Well, uh, I don't think he's going to be, I don't know, like be, Tony. be like what Iron Man did. It might be something different. Yeah, we'll it will be know. something different. And uh, Carrie, I uh, was making my way to you. You were, you Sorry. know, sadly, you're the crotch of the, uh, of the, uh, of the stream right now. So what does that make me? Make me? <laughs> you are, you were the Alice. If remember, Brady Bunch, remember when they showed like in Atlas? Okay, I thought that was going somewhere else. All right, you need, you need that, <laughs> that no, image your belly of, uh, or your belly button, maybe. I don't know. You need that Prince image Albert of Sarah Albert. Shahi somewhere, so one of us can hover over her. Her, uh, yeah. you know, I know, right? I, that was, how perfect was that? And it was funny too because <laughs> that 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 film chunky live was the most uh, viewed one of last week. I'm like, yeah, it <laughs> helps when you put. You put some good cleavage in the thumbnail and stuff. It it definitely does help. You know, I'm not saying to always do that, you know, YouTube 101. But let's face it, when you put like a, a woman with some good cleavage in a I'm thumbnail. Really careful, so. Yeah. I mean, let's face it. Uh, out of the, the last couple of vodka streams I did, the one with Meg in the thumbnail, probably. Yeah, that's going to be the one that's going to get the most views. But anyways, um, <laughs> you, uh, Mr. Kerry. So, mm -hmm. Kerry, uh, I've talked to you multiple times over the years mm -hmm. um i think you were part of uh you you were part of project comic-con when that that uh, was thing. yeah you were part of that so you were uh, you worked with them uh, and, 
And um, uh, I know that was probably like a pretty, uh, it was an interesting experience. I know there was, you know, we don't have to go through all like the logistics of it, but overall, I mean, yeah, uh, on you. what's up? Uh, Todd Fair's in there. Oh, oh, is that guy? That guy? Oh, uh, that uh, that guy's over there. Uh, all right, guy. guy. He's in there. All right, all right. I'm not gonna block him, but I'm gonna put him in timeout for right now. Okay, so you're in timeout, only for five minutes. Really, that's really shitty. It should be more than that. Yeah. Anyways, but Carrie, uh, yeah. How? Okay, so you were. Was that your last Comic Con that you uh, made it to? Yeah, well, I mean, that was the last one they had. Yeah, <laughs> San Diego sure. Comic Con was canceled this year. Yeah. So yeah, last year I was part of the ground team. So I, Eric Blake was the one who recruited me early on, like sometime around January of that year, maybe February ish. Yeah. Um, brought me into the the group chat that had a, a lot of people into it that where people were bouncing around ideas of what to do for Project Comic Con. And you know, it was in that chat where people came up with like, what if we did? I don't know. Is there a billboard we can? go for is there and then someone's like let me investigate that and then another person was like how about like uh, hey you know there's those in you know every now place downtown area has like you know those um you know the, the bus pickup areas where there's the bus ads and stuff like that so someone was like is there one near the convention center like what you know how can we figure that and someone else was like well let me investigate that so there was multiple people involved in the different projects and uh you know and then uh various people involved in the promotion of it obviously you know eric went on a bunch like he went on your show he went on a bunch of uh places to to get the word out um and then i was on the ground team that was headed up by cole and nana um and if and there was a, uh, about i want to say there was a well, I, I, there wasn't a lot of us, but there was enough to kind of like, you know, uh, to talk to some people and to try and get the word out as much as we could uh, around the convention center during Comic-Con. Yeah. I mean, I remember, I mean, that, I mean, I remember hearing about all that and, uh, and, uh, you know, when it came to the bus stop and it came to this, the, to the sign into, I mean, it was all great. It was all great. I mean, regardless of, you know, the differences that people have with me now that were part of that, um, you know, it's mute. I mean, it was, it's still, it was still, um, it still was great. And I'll still acknowledge that it was, it was great. What happened there. It was uh, more successful than not and accomplished more or less what it set out to do. So well, yeah, what I've noticed about when it comes to fan organized events, um, the fact that people can pull it off and, you know, I mean, this goes even to justice con it's like, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, and it's the same people that were involved. I mean, you know, it was Cole and Nana that were involved with that as well, obviously. And, you know, some people give them criticisms and some people are like overly like, ah, you know, and I'm just kind of going, okay, there's a way to cr critique this without sounding like an asshole. Okay. First off. And then I'm like, okay. Um, you know, give constructive criticism, realize that, you know, these girls don't have, they're just trying to raise, they're trying to raise the money. They're trying to organize all this. And, uh, you know, it's never going to be foolproof. And, you know, when it, when it comes to like trying to organize something that was happening at Comic-Con to, to, uh, you know, to get the word out. I mean, that's not going to be easy either. I mean, for yeah. when, I did that, when I did that D23 thing, that wasn't easy, you know, and that was, I mean, the first time you do anything, it's never going to be perfect. Yeah. Like you're, you're going to be, you're going to realize, oh, we didn't think of this. We didn't think of that. And there's going to be all sorts of other aspects of it that where it could have gone better um, that you think back and like you look and you say, okay, we reevaluate and you say, okay, how can we improve on this for the next time? You yeah. know, but um, I think both, whether it was Justice Con or, or Project Comic Con, you know, I think the, the, the sex, the, the successes are outweigh whatever, you know, uh, failures there might have been with it so or, or whatever mistakes were made in the midst of it and mistakes were made you know at project comic-con you know and oh. i had i had some of my thoughts they're not really worth going over but you know uh <laughs> more again uh i give way more credit to them and the funny thing was too when i was involved with that um a lot of the people at that time you know that was at the time where a lot of people in the movement were you know saw you dave and colbert and garza were like saw you guys as being anti Snyder. And I know I was I was still listening I was still listening to your vodka streams and believing in and basically was like I think Dave knows more than most people give him credit for in that's uh, you know in here. And and I so I kept my mouth shut for the most part because I'm like, well I don't want to like put a target on my back because I'm like I think you guys should be listening over here. Uh, I was like but I'm like okay I, so I just I kept my mindset on like our goal is to spread the word about the Snyder Cut. Our goal is to raise the awareness. Our goal is raising, uh, you know, uh, fa uh, funds for uh, AFSP. Um, so we got that's. 
I wanted to make sure that was my focus. I'm like, they don't have to know that I still listen to your show. <laughs> I don't need, I don't need, you know, Dave doesn't need me to defend him. You know, like I'm, I'm more than happy to, of course, but like, you know, I was like, he seems like he's got a pretty thick skin and, you know, solid head on, on his shoulders. So, um, you know, but that, and then now, you know, since then, some of the people that were involved have flipped him and, and, you know, become more in connection with, with you guys too. So, yeah. but, right. and then, the, but a lot of the people that uh, I shouldn't say a lot, some of the people that I, I was, were involved in project comic con are still in the, like those 40 club guys, they're still oh, in that camp. And I'm just like, come on. Like the proof is in the pudding. Zach appeared on your guys stream. Like, <laughs> so. Yeah, it's, uh, uh yeah. Okay. Uh, some of you guys, uh, first Andrew, you were going to say something. Yeah, I mean, what you were saying about the conventions thing, like, I can agree. This year was so when it came, I kind of preferred the, the DC one more because the San Diego one home was kind of weak. It only had a few panels that I was interested in, like the Dark Fuel one. But in the end, it that was different. And when you brought up D23, I was at the one last year. Mm. Oh, you were okay. Okay. Oh, you were at the one last year. You said San Diego? Uh, no, I'm at the D23. Oh, oh, the D23. Oh, so you were there last year. So yeah, uh, well, I was standing in, in the front of it, sweating my ass off, holding a sign <laughs> that said release the Snyder Cut. Oh, okay, that's cool. Now, that, I mean, I, what was funny about that video is like, um, you know, Justin Midside, when he uh, I, he had that sign at the uh, at Comic Con, and I was like, well, cool. And then he said he was planning on doing um, you know something for D twenty three, and I thought, okay, why not? Because I was actually supposed to go to Comic Con. Um, when he was, which was last year or whatever the hell it was, um, or whenever we were going to do that. And uh, I, was, I was really hoping you would have shown up for that one. Yeah, I, I, I would have tried, tried finding you and be like, hey, I'm going to hang around you for a little bit. <laughs> no, 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 I wanted to, but th there was like, uh, it was work stuff that, that messed that up. Oh. And um, yeah, it was just stupid work stuff. It was just a project that I couldn't get out of and, and just couldn't get out of work. So then when he mentioned D23, I was like, all right, well, I'll show up to that one. And, um, you know, then we just did that because I thought it was kind of interesting. Um, it was kind of interesting because, you know, we're we're at D23. This is a bunch of Disney and Marvel people. So let's see what happens. And when we were standing out there, I mean, well, obviously, like, you know, 91 percent of the people just walked past us going, what the hell? And there's some people are like, hey, this is a this is a convention. You don't need a protest. I'm like, we're not protesting. Look at that sign. Huh. I wish I was seeing you. <laughs> yeah. I was like, we're not protesting here, people. We're just want to get we just want to release the Snyder Cut. But um, what I wanted to ask. I, is, I uh, remember seeing at the I think it was. In front of him, where it had the big D23 logo, someone put yeah. like a, a small memorial to his Tom Holland Spider Man not being the MCU anymore. Oh, is that what they did? That's awesome. And then all of a sudden, the deal was made. Like I said, I think yeah. Sony really just held the fucking, they, they held the cards. They knew exactly you know, what they had. They know they they had people that knew, like, hey, yeah, you we have your most pr your, your most valuable character. And we yeah, have a, what's One, up? Um, when I first heard about it, I was like, Wait, what? And I'm sorry. But then on the other hand, I was kind of okay with it because after how badly they treated Spider Man MCU, I thought finally they can do it right. Because of how you know how we thought Toby did right and Andrew did more right. And what was my second thing? Um yeah, but I thought um crap, I forgot my second thing. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. No, I mean yeah, a lot of people were disappointed, but I mean, like when when that was all happening, I was like, oh, there's no way that 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 Feige and Disney. Oh, I remember and, thing. That, there's no way that they were just gonna let Spider Man go. There's no way. I mean, they know. I didn't they, think they were gonna have much of a choice. If, if Sony wanted to pull the plug on that deal, they could have. I, I yeah. wish they had. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> they were ready. Disney was ready. Uh, it took Tom Holland appealing to Bob Iger. Uh, yeah, yeah hey, I have Hey, can you please? I, I think it would mean a lot to the fans, and you know, it would mean a lot to me because I've loved working with these guys. And yeah. so he really made an appeal to Bob Iger to make a phone call to the Sony. Uh, was it Tom Rothman, the Sony exec? Uh, yeah, but, but I wish you'd have got people, voicemail. I really think people. <laughs> he, he, he I'm, really I'm, I'm in the opposite like, really camp personally. So, just one thing. Say yeah, that again. Problem. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, say that again, Andrew. That's okay, um, but do we believe the whole thing with like Tom Holland crying, saying, "Please take me back"? Do you really think Bob Iger would? He's like, talked about it. I don't but know. But do you really think Bob Iger would care about what actors would think and bring him back? 
he, he's got, why so, should Sony have? Both both Iger and Tom Holland have talked about that exchange. Yeah, I, yeah. Wow. I mean, I guess it could have happened, but I don't know. It just seems like it was like a, a marketing thing because I mean, we yeah, all know that, like, you know, we're not doing spoils when he spoils things. It's like, <laughs> Mark you know, does it too. Yeah. Here's yeah, a problem yeah. I have. Yeah, Mark Ruffalo does that too. You know. Yeah, but here's the thing. Um, um, the the MCU with um. Eat deep power and bastardize Hulk and Thor, but they would listen to sp fixing Spider Man, yeah, you know, with well, a low level actor. And by comparison, here's a problem I have with MCU. And as much as I've enjoyed the you know, most of their movies, uh, some of them I could do without, I could have done without Captain Marvel, all of the Thor movies. That's just my personal opinion. But here's the thing it acts as sort of an infection into all comic book type movies. That the only way to do things is the MCU way. Yeah, and I think that that's why we're that we wouldn't even be here with this post Snyder Cut movement if it hadn't been for that infection. Because if the sure. filmmakers and other franchises were allowed to do their movies and tell their stories like the DC way that I grew up with, and without that infection, we would be in an entirely different world right now. We should not have had to fight for a Snyder Cut. Yeah, but because of that infection. This is how we had to do this. We pretty much had to backdoor it through HBO Max and show people in the same way with Sony. Sony can tell a Spider-Man story without the MCU. The MCU is not this is not the sun that everything revolves around. You know, the best Spider-Man movie is Spider-Man 2. There's only one yes, Spider-Man movie amen, that won brother. Academy Awards, and that's that's into the Spider-Verse. That was totally done without MCU. Yeah. You know, so I, I really wish there was a breakthrough moment. Where we weren't just saying, well, we didn't build up a bunch of movies. There were people saying, well, why can't we even have a bunch of build up movies before you release Justice League? Why? DC created the superhero team. Why do they need to follow anyone else's model? Yeah, no, no. no it, it, DC it, yeah. films agree with me about yeah. the Hulk. That's good. That's good. Um, no, no, I, yeah, I totally agree because, but at the same time, it's crazy how the fact that, you know, that we didn't get that, you know, Snyder's vision right at first. Now we're getting something that we wouldn't have gotten if it got released, you know, in 2017. It's kind of crazy how like things that happen where like they change all this stuff and all the uh events that happen um with everything and having Cavill's beautiful face, you know. It made Batman do that face. Yeah. Oh god, don't even remind me. It was like uh ugh, it's just horrible. Um, you're gonna bring out the casual Batman in me. Um, no, but it, but the fact of the matter is, is like we wouldn't be where we're at right now. We wouldn't be getting like this mini series that's going to be four hours plus. It's kind of it's 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 just crazy when you when you when you think about everything that's happening. I and mean, obviously, there's certain things we didn't want to happen. I mean, I'm not going to name them, but we all know certain things that happened that we didn't want to happen that have led us to here. Obviously, but it's just so crazy how. You know, three years ago we get this Justice League movie, and it's not what we were promise it's not what we expected you know and then uh and then we hear about like oh there's a whole other version there's a whole other version that's literally like a whole other movie and it's supposed to be something greater and the fact that this movement started and i wanted to actually go around the horn like i did with the previous people is like when did you guys become aware of the movement and where did you guys kind of like i guess you could say join well uh we'll start with uh we'll start with you well, i'll just go around the horn we'll go with you uh andrew when did you first uh well, um, let's see. Well, after I saw Justice League, I enjoyed it first, but after a while, I kind of realized, wow, I was pretty much dumb. And then <laughs> later down the line, um, I may I heard a whisper of it, and then maybe hear a little bit on Popcorn Planet. Yeah. So we yeah, just like that was like end of 2017, 2018, probably. A little bit, and then I think I fully. Oh yeah. How Charlie Cox be Tom Holland's lawyer? They should. They should. I mean, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't. I would not be against cool. that. Sorry. Anyways, go ahead. So yeah, well, yeah, I may have heard the whispers and then I think I started to fully hear after the the BBS watch party, and then he went, bam, we yeah. got it. Yeah. So what would you say, like, when you join, like, actually the movement? Like, would you say, like, uh, well, it was um tough for me at first, like, I yeah. Was, like, Back and forth, but in the end, I I enjoyed Batfleck and I enjoyed yeah. Marvel. I wanted to see them done better in that movie. 
Okay, so you, you kind of joined a little later. See, and that that that's one of the reasons why I'm asking. It doesn't matter. I mean, this yeah, whole back, this whole back and forth like that happens on Twitter, where it's like who is like there from the beginning. I don't give a shit. As long as you like, you want it, you want to see it now. You're supporting it. You support the the message that it brings out. You know, the AFSP stuff. That's all yeah, that matters. I don't care. It's all the Ray Fisher drama right now. Yeah, exactly. And the Ray Fisher stuff, too. I mean, 100%. Uh, Mr. Jason, when did you uh, become aware of the Snyder Cut, Snyder Cut movement and stuff? Probably like 2017. Yeah. So pretty, uh, yeah. So you're uh, been there almost pretty since the beginning. You kind of caught wind of it. Pretty much three, because the ones I watch to watch, like the reviews and stuff, yeah. you like the positive one out there. It doesn't raise on Zack Snyder. Yeah, you're lying because apparently, according to some people, I wasn't positive. I was trying to kill that. <laughs> trying to kill. Really thought you were anti. Yeah, um, Mr. Carey, when did you? Uh, when did you first uh, kind of were aware of it and joined it? Um, it was probably within a week or two after seeing Justice League. Um, and I and I, I remember actually funny story when I first saw Justice League. Um, for for some reason, the showing I saw didn't have previews. And I was waiting for my couple of my friends to arrive, and I had their ticket, so I had to leave the theater to go out. The, this was before you know you could you know do it all you know you know organize you know select your seats over the you know, over the over the app and whatnot. So I had I had to go out to the lobby to meet them, get their tickets, and when we came in. We came in as the uh, the opening montage sequence. So the first time I saw it, I completely missed the the Cavill face. Oh, uh, stuff. And so, and then I saw the react people talking about. I was like, "What? Ha what are they talking about?" And then, and I was looking throughout the movie because I knew they had done the mustache thing um, replacement. I was looking through, the, and so the whole movie, I'm like trying to figure out where did they replace it, where did they not, you know? Um, and then the second time I saw it, I was like, "Oh, that's what people were." Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but then it was um, the. I mean, I was, I definitely started realizing like, okay, there, cause I was at Comic-Con in 2017 and I was in Hall H for the Justice League panel when Zach was still on the movie. Yeah. Um, and the, they showed that, you know, first bit of footage um, and brought out, um, I think they brought out most of the cast. Uh, that yeah, time. Except still, yeah, but there was still, no, actually they brought him out. Um, yeah, probably, really? yeah, yeah, they brought him out from 2017. On stage. He, I think he just, they mostly just sort of waved. They didn't really say much cause they're like, we gotta go and get back on the plane and get oh, no way, man. I think yeah. that was um 2016, 2017 is when they actually had some most of the cast like okay, like, you're, right. you're right. Yeah. You're right. Kind of right. 20, 2015 was the BBS panel, 2016 was the Justice League, uh, and then 27 was Justice League also, but that was after all the after Snyder left and all that drama. But 2016 was well, Zach was still on the movie and where they were still shooting. Um, no. but, but anyways, um, what was I going to say? Um, yeah, uh, and it, I, I was just scouring whatever, what are you, what you two people are talking about? Yeah. This, just, you know, Zach's Kelly movie. I probably saw the tweet, the hashtag, uh, at some point fairly on. And I was like, uh, and started trying to dial in. I was like, I think there's something else. There's got yeah. to be something else. There's just no way. Cause there's so much that was shown. And and eventually leaked that I was like, there's no way there's not something else. So it was Chris Wong's videos that were my first real. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> you can't. I you were very, you were you were a very close second probably. <laughs> <laughs> so because I was like I was like these two guys are talking about the Snyder Cut. Uh, uh, they seem to be the only ones. <laughs> so everyone That's else cool. is like saying like no, it's not happening. But yeah. you guys were like no, there's and, something um, there. Speaking of, uh, I remember recently on Collider when Joe Meganell talked about the Snyder Cut and how after the Batman got canceled, his Deathstroke scene was altered. To that, I go, what? Oh yeah, it's definitely altered. Definitely altered. And uh, I don't know. We'll see what happens when it comes to all that. I mean, him, him was a whole stream I was on with Nicotina Batman. talking about. Yeah, Batfleck. Uh, Brandon. Uh, when did you uh, become aware of the um, the movement and started joining in on the uh, festivities and everything? Um, well, first thing I'll say is like, I was super excited for the movie, but like, I know a lot of people when they first watched it, they were like, you know, they were like tricked themselves into thinking they liked it, but like me from the from the jump, I was like, what was this? Like, it was just bad. But um, but 
I guess when I, jo- I don't remember, I can't pinpoint the exact time, but I just remember seeing like the hashtag floating around and seeing a couple of videos on it, like your video and then different people posting about it. So, and then like for me, it was like pretty clear, like mm-hmm. how things were definitely changed during production. So, you know, I jumped on board, you know, big Snyder fan and, you know, from the jump, you could tell the movie was not him like at all. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's it's crazy when people like uh, you know, oh, just just learning right. like uh, learning like uh, when when people like joined in and what yeah. like I, I don't know how some people like you're a little choppy right now. I mean, as much as like your shoulders are like way better than mine, I'm just looking at that. No, but uh, what were you saying, what, Andrew? What's up? I've got to say, um, you know how I said when I heard little whispers of it. Um, I think it was at uh, one Comic Con when I was walking down the street, I saw bunch of billboards showing stuff and i think even someone drawing it up in the sky in the clouds did you oh. see the, the the airplane banner yeah that that too oh, okay. that was part yeah, of project yeah. comic-con that's true okay uh okay now we'll move over to william when did you I, and we might have discussed it of course like when we were like face to face um but um when did uh when did you um first like be aware of like hey there's like this whole movement for the Snyder Cut, and uh, there's got to be something better than what I saw. Uh, when we were rolling into the pre-screenings, because we're, we're the center, one of the things we were doing when we was promoting, we were promoting movies, and yeah. we handed out a lot of stuff like these Blade Runner posters. We handed out. That's full a, on I love that poster. Uh, so we had we were we were um, I was going back and forth with our go-between with Warner Brothers, and once we saw the pre-screening, um, this was about a couple weeks before it actually hit, and you, we knew what we had been given to promote the, the film yeah. as far as the, the previews and everything else. And you immediately saw that the structure was going. But even a little bit before that, I got the rumblings that things were going to change way when, when BBS was released and we were promoting that simple because you got the rumblings that they wanted somebody else in that helm. But BBS and Justice League had already started. They had already begun the, the, the machine that would become Justice League, and they were they were settling with that. But when I first, um, after the pre-screening, I went on and I looked, um, you know, I just started Googling, and that's how I found, I found you and Wong on the same day. I, I didn't use Snyder Cut. I didn't use anything like that. But I, I had started, um, uh, you know, Googling certain things, and I think I found you or somebody. But there were differences between the movie and then as it as it rolled on, I didn't know the Jeff Johns details. I didn't know, you know, how much Whedon had done. And uh, as far as I knew, he had just basically came in at the end. I didn't know how much he had corrupted that whole process. Mm-hmm. And then as it as it continued to go on, I just started watching more and more shows, uh, primarily you and Wong. And, um, and then the hashtag when November came around, and we you know was doing the hashtag. And, and to me, it was just gotten to the point where the more I heard about it, the more it hurt because if you look at the numbers for for Batman versus Superman, Man of Steel, all the way up, they increasingly made more and more money. But because they were being viewed through a lens of, once again, the other guys, their success was being viewed through that lens. Guys like us weren't being listened to. Now, I'll say this, and although it kind of sucks we had to go through the back door to get this done, but if it doesn't happen, I don't know who uh, Dave Pena is, I don't know who Chris Wong is. I don't know who Corberg is. There's a lot of people that beyond Snyder Cut that I'm glad that are that are I have on my screen in the background while I'm working. So I'm grateful for that, even though it sucks that you know you had to fight harder than than like a a, a, a Captain Marvel, which I thought was a C level <laughs> movie, had to do to get get its just there. But you know what? All in all, all's well that ends well. You know. That's true, and I, yeah, I appreciate uh, yeah. I, I I love the fact that you reached out when you um you figured I was like, hey, am I gonna come to Vegas? And you reached out and uh and uh you know, so I got to visit your shop and everything like that. It's always nice with all that with all that a, stuff. I have a follow up comment, but I don't want to cut into to Will Morris Yeah, we'll get to it. But uh associate producer, Will Morris. You're wearing the shirt, you got it. Um well, uh, when did you become uh, aware of the movement and when did you kind of, I guess you could say, join? Can you hear me, Will? Hey. Oh, there, it's a little delayed. Okay. okay. <laughs> really? Uh, I'll be, all right, so I'll start with the, uh, can, can y'all hear me? Yeah, yeah I can hear yeah. you. Yeah, it's a little delayed, so, but it's okay. Um, 
the first time I saw the movie, it was the night before it came out nationwide. And, and, um, so then my, uh, I got my braces out. My, I had to put my cat down and then I went to go, go see the movie. And yeah. so I was kind of forcing myself to enjoy it because of the day that I was having. And um, it was a, I forced myself to love it for months, but over time, especially when I got the Blu-ray, I realized that it was a crap movie, that it was two movies meshed into one, and over the past two years, I've really have realized how much mess has happened behind the scenes and become a big, big advocate of the Snyder Cut for the past year and a half. So when would you say like uh, like around what time would you say it's just kind of like we're like okay I'm involved in this I'm gonna use the hashtag you know whatever uh May 2018 there you go so around May yeah I mean yeah when it seems like when when people join I mean. Again, I'm like, I don't care if you joined at the very beginning or if you joined five minutes ago. I mean, that's it's one of the things that, I, you know, when I see the the infighting and all the crap that's happening, everybody's like trying to uh, talk about that. I just I, I, I don't understand it because it's like the more the merrier. I mean, I've always said that, too, is like the more I don't care if like people shit on uh, BBS. What I love is when the, the turnaround happens. I think the turnaround when people like especially when you see people that go like, oh, I thought BBS sucked, and then I watched the Ultimate Edition. That happened recently with Jeremy Johns. Jeremy Johns, oh, I like when, he, when, he, when he first saw Batman vs. Superman, he saw the theatrical, and yeah. then he just didn't revisit it. And then all of a sudden he goes, during the pandemic, at the beginning of it, he goes, well, I want to watch the Ultimate Cut. And you watch his review, and he goes, this movie's fucking good. It's it's pretty damn good. And it's like, yes, thank you. And then you turn him around and everything. Carrie, you said you had something to add to, to someone for Will. Yeah, kind of to piggyback off of what William was saying, I think one of the cool things that's really come out of the whole movement is this idea that I think prior to that, like, you know, and around the time when BBS was happening, like, you know, that was when Collider Movie Talk was had a daily show and there was all oh, sorts oh, of yeah. other, you know, things. And they were more pro all of what DC was doing at that time. They were like, we, a lot of them loved Man of Steel, uh, they were excited for Batman v Superman. They were supportive of Ben Affleck and whatnot. Um, and then everything just like all the major movie bloggers and critics um, I, I, that I was at least listening to um, that I my agreement tended to line up with theirs. They completely pivoted after Batman v Superman and everyone just started hating on it. And I feel like what the Snyder and it, I, I bet I'll, I had just, I know for myself, I felt like I was like, oh, I'm the guy. And I feel like I'm the lonely guy in the corner that loves this stuff where everybody else around hates it. But obviously the fans were loving it. But I feel like the Snyder Cut movement has propelled a lot of the fans to say like, no, we we feel very differently than everyone else does uh, on this. Uh, and we're going to start speaking up about this. Like we're not going to. We're not going to stay silent anymore and let you speak on our behalf about the stuff we love where you actually tear it to shreds. We're ready to talk about the stuff we love and, and, and not let you have the primary voice anymore. Yeah. Hey, can, I, can I say something about the infighting real quick? Yeah. I, that's another thing. Listen, if Wonder Meg and, and Bat Cole and all those people had held these events like Snyder, uh, Snyder Con or Justice Con and they uh, look behind them and there's nobody there, <laughs> if there's if there's people not watching, if there's people not doing a hashtag, then this all blows up in smoke. Yeah. Everybody is a part of it. Whether you are on a stream, whether you are on a t-shirt, whether you're spearheading it, there is no tip of the spear without the shaft. Everybody who, who has joined on is part of it. I don't see why anybody needs to feel less important. It doesn't happen. Like the nine to six people, seven people that are here, doesn't happen without those seven, doesn't happen without the thousand, doesn't happen to anybody. Yeah. yeah, there are faces that are recognizable, but like I said, a general is no one alone. If he turns around, there's no tanks, there's no airplanes. He's just a guy out in the middle of the field. Exactly, and that's what Snyder looks at too. I think that's uh, you know when 
He's not looking at like, oh, have you been there since the beginning? Have you been tweeting the hashtag? No, he hasn't been like that. He's just like he he knew he knew how to utilize his fan base, and he saw like who okay who can I trust to like hey I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do that I'm gonna like hey if I could leak something right here for this person or if I could talk about it with this person and just you know you know and, and I think that's he knew exactly what he was doing he met a lot of people obviously at the, the Snyder Cut event that he knew about, which was crazy. I mean, a lot of us were like, oh, my God, he actually knows who I am. What the? Are you kidding me? I mean, the fact that, you know, he said that about me, he said that about Swenson. He said that about, you know, Dave Avery. Oh, so I saw that little intro that you did with him. Yeah, exactly. You know, oh, we, had a fan, yeah, we had a funny one. You know, he was, you know, drinking a little bit and, and it was just like trying to get that intro right was, uh, was uh, definitely funny. But uh, yeah, I think uh, the biggest thing is just like, like I said, it's all about we're getting the damn thing. So who cares? We yeah, I mean, more. It, it's, I mean, it's people think out. like there are toxic people. It's not yeah. cool. It, yeah, yeah. And I know some people are gonna, still going to say that. That's fine. I still get that sent to me about the cider. It, it happens in the live chat. They talk about the cult, the cult, the cult. And it's just like, shut up, whatever. That's all you got? Sweet. But the fact of the matter is, you know, we got the thing. I mean, even last night talking to uh, my buddy Seek, he said that he's never seen a fan base, you know, come together like we did and just kind of go, hey, let's push for this thing and then get it. It's like that just doesn't happen. It's it's historic, to be honest. I mean, it's like we, we you know, we we're part of history, to be honest. And I'm talking about everybody, anybody that tweeted out the hashtag, made a video or something like that. It, we, we all contributed to something that never happens. I mean, how many times have you wanted to see like the actual cut of someone of some director and it's not going to happen, but maybe it'll happen more after this. I mean, it's really or sad. A TV show not getting canceled. Yeah. You know, like Firefly Ooh. or something like yeah. that. If we didn't have this kind of movement back in the early nineties, there would have been a lot of cool shows still on the air now. Yeah. A true Justice League. Huh? <laughs> I, I, I've heard I've heard every once in a while of like certain shows getting a, a, a season renewal because the fans spoke up. Like I think I remember I watched a show uh it only went on for two seasons, but like timeless. And a lot of times they would say that the the whole reason they got a second season because the fans asked for it. I'm like, I wonder where that was happening. Because <laughs> I don't remember seeing I watched the show and I liked it, but I also wasn't on Twitter, so I don't know if Twitter was a thing at that or a, a big thing at that time, but you know, like I was like, so who were the fans that spoke up for it? But whatever. Yeah. Well, the game changers, things like Hulu, HBO Max, mm -hmm. uh, Netflix, they, oh, yeah. there's these platforms now that we can, Dreaming. you know, yeah. you can re reattend it. But I, my credit credit does go to um, like AT and T and their execs for coming in here and doing that because yeah. the biggest disadvantage that a DC comic movie had is because DC has been around 80 years. Like I can, I'm in Vegas right now. I can walk out on the strip and I can ask you what's Batman's real name? Who's his butler? Who's his sidekick? Where does he live? You know, Everybody is going to know that <laughs> without ever have picking up coming into my store picking up a comic book. They don't have to tell stories like anyone else. Now Marvel, if I ask you who Jarvis is, who who's it but whose butler is he? Who's Tony Stark's main enemy? Well, they might know now but, after the movie. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. They'll well, be probably next to you. Let's see the yeah. So, great credit to them for, and Jim Lee and everybody for understanding that you can tell stories a different way. And yeah, I grew up with Christopher Reeve as my Superman. But guess what? I'm not five or six years old anymore. And it's 2020. This Superman needs to kill. You know, just like he did in the comics. <laughs> so, and it's funny, they say Superman doesn't kill, right? He kills those same exact people in the comic books as he does in the movie. So I thought yeah. that was hilarious. But I'm glad we're at a turning point, man, that we can we can get our stories told. You know? Yeah, and because uh, I remember, you know, when, when you said the HBO Max thing, I agree because they can bring all these new shows, that kind of, like the Green Lantern show. And I remember asking Dave one time, a Batflex series or a Brandon Rev? Yeah, of course he did Batflex. <laughs> yeah, because I'm a Batman fan. I, 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 that's I, mainly it. I'd be one hundred percent. Superman Returns was horrible, by the way. I'll go on record. <laughs> Superman, Superman Returns, Returns is Superman Returns. Out, oh, Superman, Superman Returns. Superman three and four was the worst Superman movie I've ever seen. That's just <laughs> hey, Brandon right here. Underrated Superman. Superman. Underrated. No, no, Brandon was a good Superman. He definitely is a good Superman, uh, and everything. But uh, yeah, that was just a horrible movie. But, yeah, it's just yeah, it was just poorly written. I mean, he he totally, uh, you know, there was just aspects of it. It's like, oh, really? We're gonna have Lex Luthor selling land again, and it almost didn't make sense too. It's like, okay, he's gonna sell land that destroys 
previous land? I'm like, like when he when they show like the when he goes through like the maps and how big that piece of land's gonna get, and it's totally gonna wipe out like half of America. It's like <laughs> like and the land is also like gross and it's scary and it's got spikes shooting out of the ground and stuff Dave, like that. I'm like, but Dave, guess what though? You know where that would have worked? That that same exact storyline, huh. 1980. Night, yeah, Basically, they were true. trying to re relive my yeah, childhood right. in 2006 when I'm a yeah. grown ass man. So. Yeah, it was it was a 100 homage to the original Superman. Oh yeah, it was. They were going too hard on it. I mean, it, I got Brandon, Ruth, it. Yeah, <laughs> Brandon, Brandon Ruth. He definitely captured uh, uh, Reeves, Clark Kent, and Superman very well. He he did, but he looked so much younger though. That's what's so funny. I always talk about that. How Brandon Ruth looked. Probably like he looked really young. He looked super boyish, but it was funny because he was actually older than Christopher Reeve when he first did Superman. It just kind of shows you, I guess it shows you how human beings have are different now. Like in the seventies, I mean, dudes in their twenties look like they're 40 <laughs> now, you know, but now it's like, you know, in this day and age, it's like with, I don't know if, if just cause we evolved or something like that. We all look relatively younger than we actually are. You know, nostalgia is the kryptonite to DC comics. Very true. Very true. I, I totally agree with that. But uh, all right, I think I'm going to wrap it uh, with you guys, and uh, I appreciate you guys uh, all coming in. 100%. Uh, Mr. Andrew, I thought you had to step out for a little bit, but uh, thank you for coming in. Jason, keep on making those pops, man. Those are uh, those are awesome, and uh, you know, keep on. You know, if you feel like making some fan art, feel like sending sending it over. It's great. I love the fact that you did that last one with the uh, with the '89 Batman logo. Hey, can we uh, do a trailer reaction to the Snyder Cut before we go? Oh, you want to do that? Okay, we can do that. You guys want to do that? We can do that. Yeah, I'm in. yeah. Let me uh, let me pull it up right now. Yeah, before we go off, and uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Brandon. Thank you, Will. Thank you, William, for uh, joining and everything. Uh, oh, why am I typing it into my thank laptop? You stupid I'm typing I, I have two keyboards here and i'm like wait a minute i'm not typing into my laptop come on dave but yeah we'll go ahead and watch this real quick and uh say our hallelujahs and everything all right so let me go ahead and share the screen and uh let's go ahead and enjoy some snyder cutness right here is everything good all right we're good all right let's go ahead and watch this bad boy <laughs> Oh, good. Beautiful. Bell can't be in run. There's that Joker card that I did not see at first, but I think that thing's going to be important. I think Leto's in the movie. That's just me. I can't help but feel like they filmed that with an IMAX camera, but I don't know if they did. Probably, eh, they might have. Uh, ah, that's yeah. Yes. This is a scene that I'm anxious to see. I'm really looking forward to this. Yeah, me too. Seriously, looking good. Of course. Is that supposed to be a dream sequence of cyborgs? I don't know. I don't think it is. No, I think he's visiting his father's grave. Pounding it. I want to see his mom. Or his mom, yeah. Yeah. I want to see the time trapper come up and, and, and basically set up this whole <laughs> Snyder voice. That would be great. Yeah. See right there. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder what, what are they doing to that thing? To the I want to see that. Yeah. It's curious. What? It looks like they're phasing it back out of their universe and into uh, Dark Side universe. Because remember, Apocalypse exists outside of the multiverse, and that's mm -hmm. how he travels from the from uh, New Genesis and Apocalypse to Earth because it's ah, outside of the multiverse. There you go. Containing those shots of the gauntlet. What are those gauntlets made out of to withstand alien blasts? <laughs> Hero shot. Ah. Uh. I need a new song though. I, I this hallelujah ever since Watchmen. Uh, 
<laughs> yeah, bitch. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I just got to make it to 2021. Not going to work. That's all. That's all yep. I got to do. We got to survive. And that's not easy. It's not easy, especially nowadays. My God. No, but we're uh, we're all doing yeah, our due bro. diligence, hopefully, and hopefully you uh. Yeah, there was you know, a time I thought we were not going to get to see this. I know there were so many times where we thought we weren't going to see this, but uh, yeah, we're definitely going to see it. So, uh, but yeah, like I said, I appreciate what what. Who I was going to say Amazon and Roku need to get their crap with. They really do. Roku especially sort it out because that that's those are the devices I use. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, yeah. I don't get the whole Roku thing. Look for Google Chromecast TV to add some leverage towards HBO Max oh, yeah. to be able to do a better Chromecast. deal with Roku and them. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I use is uh, Chromecast, you know. So, But anyways, guys, uh, yeah, like I said, appreciate you guys uh, coming in and talking to me and everything like that. And uh, we'll definitely do this again. I don't know how frequent I'm going to do it. Maybe like a once a month kind of thing. Just kind of, you know, talk to everybody out there. And uh, yeah, it's pretty good stuff. So I appreciate you guys uh, coming in. So we'll talk to you guys later. All right. Thanks so much, Dave. All right. Take it easy, Andrew, Jason, Carrie, Legend, or Brandon, Will, and everybody. Nice meeting you guys. Take it easy. Take it easy. All right. Well, that was cool. All right. So that was uh, Twitter people. I invited some more Twitter people, but I don't know if that's going to happen. Uh, hold on just one second. Let me go ahead and refresh my beer. Um, and then I'll just kind of wrap it up. I'll probably just wrap it up here because I know, uh, Swenson, I think Swenson's going on in about 20 minutes. I want to overlap that guy. Ah. I should really get my beer when uh, somebody else is on there. So, ah, well, thanks for coming on. Thanks for coming on, Jason. Appreciate it. Yeah, I don't think anybody else is going to, you know, I wasn't planning on doing like a vodka stream type, you know, <laughs> time on here. But I know some other people wanted to join that were, that, that were hitting me up on Twitter. But uh, that's not going to happen, I guess. Yeah. So, sorry. Hey, I know. I know. Hey, I'll get you next time. I swear to God. Gav, I'll, I'll, I'll get you next time. I swear. I will get you next time. You know, I was just, I was wondering, I'm like, how many people are actually going to like hit me up? And it was quite a bit. Um, and uh, so it turned out to be quite a panel. So we'll see. Yeah, don't worry. Yeah, uh, and yeah, and Bar, you know, don't worry. I'll get you next time. Like I said, this is probably going to be something I'll do, you know, every, at least once a month or every other week or something like that. If I'm free on a Saturday, I actually uh, enjoy this. Yeah, actually, pretty much enjoy. I I enjoyed this a lot. So if you didn't get an invite today, you'll get one next next time. And like I said, if you want to be uh, part of the uh, the Patreon, um, we'll definitely. Uh, the, those people actually go first. So, you know, you'll definitely get on with that. But yeah, that was a lot of fun talking to like uh, people, especially people that I've talked to many times in like DMs and whatnot, really, you know, kind of got to know them through all that. Just to kind of talk, you know, to people that have been there since the beginning. You going to go? Yeah, it's, well, it's been a pleasure there, Joker. Mm hmm. Yes, Gav. It works on phones. A lot of, a couple people were on their phones. So, it definitely does work on phones, so don't worry. Yeah, they made it. They made it. Um, they made it where it's mobile friendly. So, but uh, yeah, that was good. That was good. I was kind of wondering like how I was gonna attack it. You know, maybe I'll make some kind of adjustments. You know, if we want to, maybe I'll make it where it's like, hey, we'll have a one on one, and then just like uh, get people in here. Um, you know, part of me does did want to be like, hey, let me just throw the fucking. <laughs> invite out there and see what happens but i think it was better this way because everybody who joined i knew i was like okay this guy's gonna be fine it's gonna be fine because you kind of got to worry about that i don't want another fucking spider-man a spider wang situation some at, you know one of the trolls that likes to uh troll me clicks on the link and all of a sudden i click and uh he's got his dick out or something like that <laughs> you don't want that okay okay not until i uh start my only fans but that's what I was kind of worried about. It was like, if I just send it out randomly, I don't know. But um, thanks for coming on, Carrie. Appreciate it, bud. 
Uh, you're a little late there, Mike. You're a little late. We're already like two hours. We're two fourteen. <laughs> We're two fourteen in this thing, so it's probably the best time to uh to do that. But uh, yeah, I uh, yeah, I definitely uh, this was like a test to see like if this was gonna work, and I I definitely dug it, and I think uh, I'll do it more often. I think if I'm not doing anything next Saturday, I think uh, I think uh, that 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 idiot who drinks more than me with a Batman mask needs to do another live stream or something like that. I think he's due for a live stream, especially with all the stuff that's been coming out, you know, about the Batman. He probably needs to, um, he probably needs to, you know, get his, uh, get it. Or maybe I'll just do a regular video. I don't know. We'll see what happens, but I know you guys enjoy the casual Batman live streams and everything like that. So, but yeah, that was, uh, that was a lot of fun and I appreciate everybody who uh, joined in. Like I said, if you want to, uh, like, if you want to be first in line for one of these, you know, just join the Patreon, even if it's like, you know, a dollar or whatever the hell, it doesn't matter. It helps out the pirate ship. Go for it. Links provided down below. And, uh, I hope to do more of these, you know, more of this, uh, interact with more people that are part of the, the Patreon. So go ahead and do that. And, uh, yeah, but yeah, thank you to everybody. We had Darren. We had, uh, 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 we had brand, uh, not Brandon. Well, yeah, there was a Brandon. We had Darren, we had uh, Jacob. That's what I was saying. Darren, Jacob, and of course, Scott, who, uh, our patron or patrons of the film junkie empire. And then, uh, yeah, thank you to, uh, to William, Will, Carrie, uh, Andrew, uh, Jason. And of course, um, was that everybody? I probably didn't say everybody. Yeah, I said that Brandon, everybody. Yeah. Hopefully I got everybody's name, but I uh, appreciate those guys coming in and talking to me and uh, yeah, let's uh, hopefully do this soon and everything like that. And uh, yeah, I'll definitely uh, keep you guys posted. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to do, I might do a Sunday morning, a Sunday morning hangover stream, you know, after drinking all this beer, I probably will be hungover because I usually don't drink beer. You guys know I'm usually all about the, uh, still have my, I <laughs> still have the, uh, my uh, vodka glass up here from last night. But yeah, we'll see what happens. You know, if I feel like doing a, a live stream tomorrow, talk about more things, I'll probably, I, I might do it. We'll see what happens. I'll let you guys know, of course. But uh, yeah, appreciate you guys clicking in and uh, watching and all that stuff. And I will talk to you guys later.